Hi, and welcome to the Graveyard Media Podcast, Episode 7, for the week of August 28th, 2017. Uh, I am your co-host, Sane Gray. With me are Dawson. Say hi. And Thel. Hello. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> wow, steal my fucking spotlight, I. Right? You guys want some uh, good morning, anyone? You guys want some bacon and eggs or anything? Like, you know. Mm. I'm fucking here. What are you talking about? Bacon and eggs. Oh, like, you know, I could go, like, whip up some fucking pancakes or some shit. Like, I don't think. I think we have a rule against eating here. Yeah, no eating on the podcast. It's true. Look at you, now, Dawson. After our, uh, after our short hiatus here. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat the fucking cereal right out of the box. Okay, I was gonna make some nice fucking pancakes or some shit, but yeah, um, I'm just gonna eat the cereal right out of the bag. That's we bad. have returned. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. After all these years. So this is our first uh, recording in three weeks. Or is four weeks? This would be the fourth week, so three weeks. Uh, a lot of life stuff came up. Also, yeah. I was on vacation last week at Dawson's place. I was also on vacation. At his own place. At my own place. <laughs> I was technically on vacation from these two, basically. <laughs> so yeah. Vacation from us, yeah. Fair enough. So we'll start with we'll start with some games we've been playing this week and then move into uh move into um game stories and movie stories sounds wonderful okay so who wants to start rochambeau for it it's since it's been three weeks we probably have quite a bit to talk about probably um, maybe definitely on the movies and tv side for me yeah uh do you mind if i start yeah go well, ahead. well actually do you mind if i get us started off because uh should we talk about ducktales should we talk about sure, DuckTales? Let's, sure, let's talk about DuckTales. Oh Tales. my fucking god. Let's talk DuckTales. about DuckTales. Oh, um, yes. I saw the first episode of DuckTales uh, while, while these two were on vacation and, you know, whatever. Um, I thought it was great. I liked it. I thought that it has a lot of potential. Each of the characters has their own little character that was divulged in, like, the first two technically episodes, the first, like, 40-minute <laughs> introduction to the series uh everything was nice all the writing was fun uh good has a lot of potential i'm looking forward to more yeah i thought the animation was really good too yeah i, uh, yeah. I, I think the the main point that i really enjoyed is that huey dewey and louie are not just the same character with different colors they have their yeah, own yeah, yeah, personalities yeah. that's what i really liked about it yeah, um, you got, you got, I, well, I, I'll, I, unfortunately, I can't really, like, distinguish between them yet, because, I mean, they, they each have a colored shirt, their name are Huey, Dewey, and Louie. You got the one who's, like, trying to be the fucking leader, the one who's just there having fun, the one who's trying to get Webby to tell fucking lies. It's great. And also, Webby was great, One too. of them was a boy, the red, the red one was a boy scout. I don't remember their names, yeah. but, uh. Uh, I think. Which, well, I, we remember their names, we don't remember we don't which, remember which right. one corresponds which to which color, Yeah. I think the red and one that, is Huey, oh. the blue one is Dewey, and the green one is Huey. I thought the blue one was or Bluey. Dewey. You said you. <laughs> yeah, I already confused myself. You 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 said you said you said that you thought that the uh the one of them was Huey, one of them was Dewey, and the other one was either Huey oh. or Dewey. <laughs> it was Louie. That's right. Yeah, the green one is Louie. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Uh. We and they actually gave uh, Webby a lot more personality too than she. Yeah, I love that. That really surprised me. Like I was not. That didn't surprise me I, at all. I kind of saw I it did, coming because I. I don't know. It, like she was really flat in the old cartoon. I didn't even know she was in the old cartoon. I didn't know she existed. What I mean, surprised token, me yeah. was that she was not Token Girl. Yeah. Like, and and for the first couple of minutes that she was on the screen, I really thought she was gonna be. I was like, "Oh look, she's a girl, and she does kung fu, and wow, no. she is a strong female character who's gonna be it's, with these duck boys." And then like just the the whole rest of the thing, she was just hilarious. I loved her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Sadie from Steven Universe for voicing her. Was that her? Oh yeah, absolutely. Recognized it immediately. <laughs> I I didn't recognize it. <laughs> I wasn't listening close, really, closely. Really. Sadie, but yelling. Sadie, Sadie. but yelling. 
I don't know, Sadie yells a lot too in Steven Universe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, but she also cries a lot, and Webby didn't cry, I don't think. Yet. Maybe. Yet. <laughs> Um, we still have much, much time to go. We still can get Rebecca Sugar in on this project. <laughs> it'd be like a passion. I mean, she probably watched DuckTales. It could be a passion project for her. Everyone's fucking crying now. Everything she does is a passion project for her. <laughs> Damn right, and that's why I love her. Exactly. Yeah, and, and and that's another thing about this show. Uh, it feels like it's very much a passion project for all the people who are working on it. It feels like feels like they want to bring it into new places that Ducktales has never been before. Right? They might solve a mystery like and we're... rewrite Duck history <laughs> we're, we're, because we're they're changing getting... the formula. I, they aren't though. They're not changing the formula. They're just making it better. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, Actually, that's they're taking more cues from the comic book, yeah. the original comic book, rather than the original TV show. Yeah. The original TV show actually changed a lot from the comic book, and this is already oh. closer. Uh, yeah. to other that. other things I, I hope that they take I more think... from the comic book is that Vampire Duck. I don't. Ah, yes, the one Duck. that looks like a goth something. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that yeah, the witch lady. Uh huh. Um. I mean... Yeah, she was in the intro in the old old version. That's all I really remember about her. Yeah. Uh. They also name dropped Cape Suzette in it, which yeah. is the uh, place that Tailspin takes place. Yeah, and I don't, I didn't catch this, but I heard that uh, they also mentioned um, uh, the place where Darkwing Duck takes place, but I forget what it's called. New Duck City or some of them. Shit. Yeah, I think it was probably during the Family Tree part. Maybe I don't remember. Yeah, um, that's great though. Because... But they, I think they've already confirmed that Darkwing Duck is making a cameo at some point. But having them mention Cape Zeus, uh, Cape Suzette, like right away, is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I'd like a Tailspin reboot too. That that one's actually the one I remember most. Are you guys most. ready for the Disney cartoon cinematic universe? That was the original <laughs> cinematic universe. I know. That was that was uh. There was a famous like comic book story that connected all of the Disney car like Disney car Saturday cartoon properties or whatever. Bitch, you find me a cinematic universe older than fucking Godzilla. I mean, that's the shit that started this whole thing. Did you really have to take a fake smoke for that? Yes. No, not really. <laughs> well, not for Failed Godzilla, because I love Godzilla. There's Godzilla also the... Uh, the uh, original Monsters movie, Cinematic Universe. Oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, th those are actually older than Godzilla. So yeah, are they? Okay, I wasn't sure because Godzilla. Yeah, was Godzilla old, was post-war. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And those were pre-war. Those were like the 30s. Godzilla was like 40. 40 ah, so I found one older on accident. You did. You straight up did. Go, you, you go ahead and take a drag off your God, fake cigarette, God, Sam. Gosh damn, proved my point. I don't fake smoke. <laughs> yeah, Thel. Fake yeah. smoking is bad for you, man. Man, I'm gonna get all kinds of fake cancer. I'm gonna have 12 Shouldn't fake do that. years taken <laughs> off my life. Okay, so... Okay. Are we done with DuckTales? I... Are we? Okay. Oh, yes! No, are we? Oh. I loved Scrooge McDuck. I loved him. David Tennant, everything he touched just turns to gold. Oh, and yeah. He, he, was, he was great. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, made a Twin Peaks season three reference. Oh, Good yeah. Job, Ryder. Yeah, that. <laughs> when we watched it, um, Dawson didn't recognize that it was Scrooge McDuck right away. <laughs> I didn't it was recognize David Tennant. David Tennant, yeah. I, I didn't realize that he was Scottish, I guess. Or really? is he Scottish, or was he <laughs> yes, doing a yes, Scottish? He's, he is where, very, like, he's Scottish. very Scottish. He had to do yeah. an English accent in huh. Doctor Who. I, I did not realize that. Well, because I uh, I think... No, 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 it was Christopher Eccleston who was in Heroes. Uh, there was something else he was in David that Tennant. he was also doing... Yeah, David Tennant, that he was also, I guess, doing an English accent because... Happy Popper? I know. He was doing was an American that. accent in Jessica uh, Jones. Yeah, yeah, maybe that was it. In Jessica Jones, he was doing an American accent. Like, I, I don't think I've ever heard him actually use a Scottish accent <laughs> in anything. So, yeah. well, I, just I didn't realize Scottish, that he was Scottish. Yeah. 
I mean, um, I also knew Ben. That might have been, you know. Also maybe. that I knew he was playing Scrooge McDuck. That was one of the things I did. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, New DuckTales. Okay, David Flynn is playing Scrooge McDuck. What? Oh, that that's, yeah. That is the other thing. <laughs> that is bizarre. the other thing. Um, yeah. Scrooge McDuck was supposed to be Scottish, but man, did they lay it on thick in the new one, which I love. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I uh, thought they, they were always kind of like, they always kind of played that up. Yeah. Why not? Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, did, I, I mean, they, they even so. played it up from a writing standpoint. His was, oh, yeah. was that was that that villain was like for this right? He didn't appear in the old Ducktales, did he? I don't I think remember. I don't, the comics. I don't actually remember. The, yeah, the the villain that of the episode at least, and it, the, the looks, second looks richest like Scottish duck. Yeah, the duck second Burg. richest Scottish duck in <laughs> Duckburg, and he was he he was like, I'm gonna be more rich and more Scottish than you. <laughs> Maybe that was his downfall. He was he wasn't so Scottish. Scottish. He, no, no, no. He was too Scottish. He didn't focus enough on the rich part. That's <laughs> where uh, Scrooge McDuck won. That's where he got Scrooged. Yeah, that's, that's how he got Scrooged. <laughs> You're the best of the cheapest. I, I really liked Donald Duck. He was fun. Another thing that... Yeah, uh, Donald was great, too. Everyone, oh, yeah. Yeah, I Donald was great. I cannot I understand Donald. anything he says still, though. But oh, it, Yeah. <laughs> Like, Which I feel like is worse. completely intentional because you can't understand yeah. anything he fucking says in the old one either. <laughs> <laughs> um, those those two wolf guards that were working for the bad guy, um, I, there was I don't I don't remember I just I saw this like on like Tumblr or something and somebody was like fanning over it. It was weird, but apparently they share the color scheme of a popular like fan couple it was like a wolf and then the color scheme of the it was like a deer or some something some some kind of lady and that was a popular fan couple and in the old show or an old show i don't remember which one it even was i i, I, was I, I really Tunes. wish that i had it, i thought it looked like a looney i don't i don't think that was intentional i saw that too and it, it i don't know yeah i maybe i don't know but I, I, it it looked pretty damn close to me. I don't, it was weird. I was like, I can see it, okay. but I don't know enough to confirm. Anything else before we move mm -hmm. on about Ducktales? No, I think that was it. I think we're good. Woo! What else? Have the you next seen episode this week? airs September twenty third. You guys should catch the first episode because it's fucking great. Yeah, it's great. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Ones, yeah. If all of us say it's good, then it's probably really fucking good. <laughs> yeah, usually we uh focus on different things and other stuff. Um, yeah. what else have you seen, Bell? Uh, what do you want to talk about next? Shit, I actually haven't been seeing a lot of stuff. I mean, I watched a lot of Frasier, but I don't. I feel I feel like that's a little <laughs> bit old to talk about. Well, <laughs> that's a little bit outdated. <laughs> Why um, don't we talk about BoJack Horseman? Oh my oh, yeah. god. Oh yeah, you guys can go I, I haven't I haven't I, I think uh you guys have still seen a little bit more than I. I've seen me, everything. Me included? So yeah, yeah, you included. Oh. Uh because I haven't gotten all the way through the first season. Which is sad because this first season's good. Yeah, yeah. Well I mean even up to the it's... point that I watched it was pretty good. Okay. This is this is what I, I, I I've already said this to both of you, but I'm just gonna say it again for emphasis. Anytime somebody tells me, oh, well, it starts out looking like some dumb Fox show with bad animation and bad writing that's just family guy humor all around, but trust me, once you watch a little bit, it gets really good. People have said that to me about countless fucking shit. Somebody said that to me about American Dad, which is literally just family guy. Like, yeah. people talk to be about fair, family guy, like or uh, to be fair, American Dad is a bit better He's than on family guy. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it is, and, yes, and it is but, also on Fox. But it's still, it's still pretty dumb. And then people say that about Bob's Burgers all also the time. Also on Fox. Bob's Burgers is definitely one of the the higher tier kind of. Fox I think Bob series. Burgers is easily way better than Family Guy. Like Family Guy. But it's, yeah, it's better agree, than definitely. anything Seth MacFarlane has ever touched. Obviously, yeah. but. But it's not. I like, still don't. I still don't see it. It's not like like people are uh, like, "What is so good and emotional and blah, blah. And I just I think I that one. I think it. that one you just might have a blind spot for because that one is legitimately better than most of the even even stuff like uh uh 
Well, I don't know. I, but yeah, I don't know. The, the 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 point that I'm trying to get to is that everybody always said that about BoJack Horseman, and I looked at it and I was like, no, it's just gonna be the same fucking thing that everybody always says. And then while we were while all saying was out here, he sat me down, forced me to watch it, and within like what? Oh the yeah, I very, really twisted very your first. Arm. <laughs> the very first episode you were like you want to watch it i was like hmm, okay <laughs> <laughs> but within like it was the first episode right i was like wow this is fucking way yeah. better than any of those stupid cartoons that i thought it would yeah, be yeah like. cuz the the yeah. writing is the jokes are very well put together they're very like good wordplay um yeah. Very snappy. Except for when they're bad wordplay on purpose, so that yeah. Bojack can complain <laughs> about how bad the wordplay is. Yeah, um, uh, I, 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 I really also, I really like that, and that's, and that's one of the things Dawson has been talking about. Like, like, uh, all of the shows that you mentioned were on Fox, and this is, this is a, this is a show that's on Netflix. I feel like they have some semblance, especially because it was one of their early shows, they have some semblance of, like, you know, quality control and they don't want to have like the fox brand it's like the fo fox well, you like, say that and then of... iron fist comes out yeah well yeah yeah i know but this is a little bit later like like when they were first getting started it was pretty much like, yeah the quality um uh like like a lot of the fox shows do have like a very fox humor like it comes off of the whole simpsons <laughs> thing it got it, they, they want their animation thing to be really fucking big and really fucking popular and to have that fox feel yeah and i uh, you know this is this is something com completely different and, exactly yeah, it definitely feels completely different it's one of, it's one of those things like uh i actually watched while you guys were away i watched a little bit of xavier renegade angel which i sort of oh, i fucking <laughs> hate that show <laughs> really <laughs> why it is one what? of the, my least favorite shows i've it's ever it's the watched. same shit hate. as like 12 ounce mouse or assy mcgee it is literal dog I, shit I like, on purpose i like 12 ounce mouse really? but <laughs> what i i, I, thought, I, 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 thought, I was... thought 12 ounce mouse was funny Squidbillies I, is the worst offender. Of that. I actually I like Squidbillies. Well, 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 I, I I don't like Squidbillies just because like uh, I think uh, well yeah, that's think... because you you have a personal vendetta. Yeah. I feel. Well, here's <laughs> the thing I like about Renegade Angel is because like uh it it is it is um not only just that uh it's it's the same guys that did Wonder Shows and um it's just straight up faux intellectualism on purpose. What uh, I don't know. It's I, stupid shit on what purpose. I what I dislike about it is it's like very absurdist and yeah all really. too random and i just can't it's not interesting to me it's well, just well, annoying well, uh, that's that's the thing it's it's absurdist purely like in a new age way like I, I, it's making I, fun of like I don't know. all of this new age stuff from like the like the, that that's the entire point of the show uh, like i, I mean I, sure I got but i think it's it. dumb so i yeah i just kind of also Never right. really liked it. I and I've, I think that I've seen Xavier... a lot of it too because I used to watch all of the things on Adult Swim. I remember oh. watching <laughs> that when it was live, so I've seen most of it. I just didn't yeah. like it ever. Alright. So I um I feel like Xavier Renegade Angel Xavier, the titular care. He he Xavier mm -hmm. is the bird man, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's been like twelve years or something since that TV show. Like a was bird on snake man. Yeah, I feel like he made a much more impactful and and important appearance in multiple episodes of, of um, Rick and Morty. <laughs> he was just much better in that show. I feel like I feel like they really didn't uh, didn't use the actor to his full extent until they took him on to Rick and Morty. Really, to play well, actually to play sort of... bird person. Uh, that's one of the reasons that um, a lot of people have been uh, going to Renegade Angel is just because they've uh, they really? found like the uh, recent Rick and Morty season to be really really lackluster, and they're like, "Hey guys, remember Xavier Renegade Angel and how it was like faux intellectual on purpose and actually really really funny?" Yeah, here it I is. I think that uh, I think that random clips from it work better on Tumblr now than. They did when it came out. Speaking, I think that it's of just that. that kind of like dumb fucking humor that happened. Can I somewhere. segue? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Off of what you said, Sane. Fucking Sonic Boom. 
Oh yeah, we've yeah. gotten really been far off of Bojack. Loading, but... <laughs> yeah, we have. That's fine. I... Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Bojack Sonic is good. Boom. Watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's it's, it's uh, fantastic. I like this is coming from somebody who intentionally did not watch it for like five seasons because I thought it looked like some dumb random fucking Fox show. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to see that. It's fucking stupid. I don't like Family Guy. I don't like Bob's Burgers. I don't like any of those. Yeah, stupid... and then while we were out there, and we then, watched some of it. Yeah, and then I was like, wow, this is fantastic. A plus. Um, Sonic Boom though, man. With what you said, it works way better with dumb random clip, like 30 second clips of jokes from it. There are particular jokes in it that are just really funny. Well, I think the thing about it. It's such a slog. I think the thing about it is like, it works better as little clips because the show does the same thing that Family Guy does, where it'll like cut to something completely irrelevant to what they're talking about and make a joke about it there. And it, and the plot, the overall plot of the show is like boring and pointless. But yeah. they'll have these little moments where they'll make a joke about something, and then it has and it'll be, mostly yeah. nothing to do. Yeah, with what I don't. Doing. I don't think that they they like necessarily cut. It's not like they do like flashbacks or jump cut to some. Well, they don't do it as thing. obvious as as Family Guy does because they, they do it do... constantly in Family Guy. But they do this, something pretty similar to it in that. They, they they do have just like random things that just kind of happen like they're like asides they're, it's not the, it's yeah. not like an actual like a literal flashback but it's like they cut they kind of go over and do something else that kind of, is kind of exactly. like random there were there were a couple of episodes that i that i like really I enjoyed as a concept like there like we only watched like what seven episodes I of it know. maybe yeah, yeah it, was, like it wasn't very much but i liked the episode where uh it was one of the first episodes. Eggman fucking told everybody that his his secret robot base blew up, and so he was their roommate for a week. A that was a day yeah. or whatever. No, it yeah. was it was like a week. Yeah, yeah, but... it, it was it was a while, and then it turns out, of course, his his robot base didn't blow up, and he was just plotting the whole time. And then they beat the robot, or, or no, they didn't even beat the robot. He did something dumb, and then the robot went to go blow up his base. And they agreed to help him because if the robot actually blew up his base, he'd have to be their real roommate for a while. And they were like, "Okay, I, I like I thought that the, the the concept of that was funny, but then like the rest of the rest of the episodes, I don't know." Actually, that that episode that you mentioned liking is the one that I hated the most. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know. That show is just, it's uneven. It's all over the place. The characters are, like, very flat. Boring. Yeah, they really are. I don't know if it gets better, but, man, it They're starts like super, off pretty bad. Super one-dimensional. But it does start off pretty bad, which is weird, because I remember when it was starting, people were like, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Wait a second, no. I watched the first couple of episodes, and it's really good. The first couple of episodes are really, really bad. Hmm. Really bad. And obviously, people bring clips from... Yeah. People get clips from like... the later episodes. Honestly, the clips look like the animation got better too, which was a big drag for me because I like animation a lot and the animation was It is very bad. It's very stiff. It looks... Absolutely terrible. I don't yeah. Like, don't it like looks it. like a like a first year fucking intern. They just gave it to one guy and he was like, Well, I have these models, I'll just Well, it's the it's the trap that all three D modeled shows kind of fall into like yeah, that takes really, so much time and expense to do animation that way even more so than traditional yeah. um but they kind of pump it out to be cheaper and it just looks bad like exactly. every time like this if people some people are starting to complain about like the flash kind of era of cartoons with like i don't know like my little pony and stuff like that yeah. But and even, and, and even that like, like yeah, and even like uh, like Family Guy and American Dad have this kind of flash, like you know, same well, face going know, on. Those same are animated poses. and go animate, so like. Well, whatever. Yeah, I mean, really the same kind of, but I mean, just the general same kind of like flat puppet animation. Yeah. Um, and I just don't. Like, I would rather that than this. Like, yeah. when, when you use cheap 3D animation, it just looks bad and 
feels bad. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. That said, good 3D animation can be absolutely out of this world. If it's in the movie. If it's that's in the movie, thing. Like, the yeah. movies are way better. Like, yeah. I, I, uh, even to the extent where I watched, um, I, not not a lot, but some of that uh, uh, King Julian show on Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and the animation wasn't great in that, but it was tolerable. Mm-hmm. But it would have just been better if it was like two D animated, even yeah. if it was puppet style animation. It probably would have just been better. Yeah, um, exactly. And I also watched the Puss in Boots one, and that one, <laughs> the animation was so bad. Man, yeah. Um, oh yeah, that one Pretty was even worse than King Julian, which I was actually most kind of DreamWorks about. movie spinoff shows are just really bad animation, which is weird because DreamWorks is such a good animation studio. From well, I, I feel like because standpoint. they're um pulling all of their money to like their theatrical releases, exactly. That's really right. Money. These these are just like <laughs> things that'll make them a quick buck on the side. Exactly. Um, but if they converted it to 2D animation, I think it'd probably look better. Oh, yeah, I oh, agree. Yeah. Uh, there's a home show, I think, that's 2D animated. I ain't gonna watch that shit to see if it's, like, if the animation's better. Yeah, but, I don't uh, want to watch that, so yeah. Yeah, thought, same. I thought that the animation in the movie was bad, wasn't it? No. In home? No? No, it was typical DreamWorks. It wasn't any better or worse than any other thing made by DreamWorks. Yeah. I mean, animation-wise. No, yeah. I've seen at least an episode of, like, all those DreamWorks direct-to-TV slash Netflix series, like, Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesome, it was fucking horrendous animation. Fucking, dra- I think Dragons, the, the, the How to Train Your Dragon one, Writers of Burke, I think it's called, that is, like, the worst offender. That one's uh, really bad. Because uh, they, they, they need the dragons to look really complicated and cool. Like, that's the whole draw of How to Train Your Dragon, is that the dragons all look really unique and complicated and cool, and all of their movements are fluid, and they move like real things. And it's just, oh, God, if you don't put effort into it, it just looks so bad. Well, it's not I'm that sorry, they're not putting effort into it. It's just that it's... Uh. In order to do it fast enough and cheap enough, you have to cut corners. Right. Uh, before you started, like, l- like saying what you were saying, uh, w- w- before you'd finished your thought, I was thinking, when the fuck did DreamWorks make a Dracula movie? Dra- <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just like a Dra- Dracula, what the fuck? Wait, what, what did I miss? <laughs> yeah, I know. How long have I been asleep? <laughs> <laughs> New Dracula movie by DreamWorks. Hi, it's me, Dracula. Thel, you've been asleep so long, my beard fell out. <laughs> the fuck happened? What the hell? <laughs> I mean, even yeah. even Sony Animation Pictures, which has like a really bad reputation. Uh, I think they have better spinoffs, even right? Yeah, yeah. I like. Which an- yeah. hang on. which animation studio? I was just agreeing with you because I'm pretty sure anything would be anything uh, Sony. would be better than the uh, Sony, Sony. Sony. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure they have better spinoffs. Like, I can't think of one. Give me an example. There, uh, I'll probably uh, see it. Uh, um, uh, is there a Minions TV show yet? <laughs> oh, but apparently, <laughs> apparently they're making a Hotel Transylvania series. I'm gonna need this. I I actually liked. That series, though, or not Whoa. that series, but that show. And Hotel also, Transylvania uh, or Minions. Hotel Transylvania. Minions was just kind of boring. <laughs> but check this out. This is what uh, the main character looks like in this animation style. And they're doing exactly what I'm saying. They're converting to 2D animation. Yeah. Because it looks check. better. Yeah. Check that out. Can you? Uh, is there any way you can toss that up on the podcast real quick? Uh, not you easily. You not have a framework. Okay, never mind. Forget it. Toss it in the toss it in the chat. No, I'll just. Hold no, on. that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that looks. I I don't know. It looks. I mean. There you go. It looks very much like a flash doll. Uh, very. I mean, much. it probably is a flash doll. I mean, so. yeah, it, it is, and it looks like it. There are some shows that use flash dolls that they do not look like flash dolls, but 
this looks very much like a flash doll, but it looks probably better than a cheaply animated 3D thing for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It just looks better than than It just looks better. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh. Oh, the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is the other TV series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's on Cartoon Network cuz they always show the fucking movie in between episodes yeah. of Teen Titans. Go. <laughs> No, no, don't get it twisted. I wasn't talking about the good one. You know what the fuck it is. And Cloudy you know with the a Chance of Meatballs was one of the better movies. That was entertaining. Teen Titans yeah. Go one time was pretty entertaining where they had an episode where they just watched the old one and were like, wow, this is so much better. What are we fucking doing with our lives? Um, <laughs> and, and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs has like a really kind of weird animation style. Here, I'll... Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's very whoa. It it looks weird, but it looks in a weird, good way. but it looks pretty unique. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it almost looks like a kind of like Gumball, almost a little bit, a little bit. Or what's Gumball? That other, what's that other show? Shall we segue into Gumball? Fell, have you watched any of that? Uh, I've watched a little bit of it, like when it was first starting up, but not like a ton. <clears throat> yeah, we Even we started watching up. Gumball. Yeah, it, it's 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 it, it's been good throughout its whole. Oh, it's run. great. Yeah, and like, I I I've said it. I I know I've said this like four or five times, but it's it's always relevant. I am really into animation, and I really like the quality that Gumball brings to anime. Like, all of the backgrounds and shit are like. They're either photos or rendered. I can't tell. I think they're 3D rendered because I right. feel like a lot of the texture on the walls and stuff are flat looking. But right. you can tell that I, they... I feel like some of them are photographs, though. I I don't know. It's hard to tell. I think they spend a lot of time getting the lighting right on it. Yeah. And that's what makes 3D renders look good. I think right. outside... I think the school is 3D rendered. I think outside is photographs yeah like occasionally when they go to they'll go to like a scene where there's like a bunch of like a couple of hills or a mountain or something right and that's a photograph but... and i think the inside of their house is a mixture of the two yeah but either way like let me say what i like the most about gumball is that the characters first off a lot of the characters are completely different styles of animation. Like, yeah. totally fucking different. Gumball's whole family is obviously animated. I, yeah. I think they're Flash puppets, probably, but they, they don't really look like it. Like, you, you, you don't look at that and be like, oh, it's a Flash puppet. I mean, you can tell they are, but yeah. you don't look at it and be like, oh, look, a shitty Flash puppet. I'm back. Because, yeah, it does at least look really good. But then there's, like... Banana Joe, who is either... I am pretty sure he's 3D modeled. And then there was a whole episode with a guy who was, like... His name was Clayton, I think? Yeah. And he was literally a ball of clay. And his whole... That whole character was Claymation. And yeah. he could transform into different things. And he he was clay. Like, I think... all of it was Claymation. It was yeah. great. Or then... I think, the Gumball, I think Gumball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna mention that. I think uh, Gumball and Darwin. I think actually Gumball's whole family is traditionally animated. Yeah, traditionally oh, animated. Really? Oh, okay. I think so. I thought they were Flash puppets. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, well, here's if the thing, they like, are, uh, they're really good ones because yeah. they don't yeah. see they they distort quite a bit. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was saying when you uh when you popped off for a second. Um. No, I heard you. Yeah. yeah, they 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 don't really look to me like Flash puppets, but I you know. I, I mean, they. Up, oh, you uh, your mic cut out. Yeah, it's it's still cut out. It's, okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I they don't look to me exactly like flash puppets, but I feel like they they are just because it's. Kind I mean, of... they probably. I mean, yeah. they might be, but they're actually pretty. Yeah, <clears throat> they're pretty good at distorting them. Kind of like a. You know what? It's probably actually Toon Boom. Because, uh, yeah, probably, because yeah. My Little Pony started out being Flash Puppets, but eventually they moved to Toon Boom, which is why they started distorting faces and stuff a lot more in the later seasons. Yeah, yeah. because it's easier to do than a pre-built puppet. Yeah. Um, they still use, like, some puppet work, mm -hmm. but uh, 
I didn't know that My Little Pony switched to Toon Boom. Yeah, they did. <clears throat> um, I think as of the first episode that uh, uh, Starlight Glimmer was in. Oh. I think that's so the point that they switched. Four, I think. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, that's interesting. But yeah, like, I just, I really love Gumball. It's like, I've only... Did we get to season two? I can't even remember. Yeah, we were about halfway through season two. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things, like, I occasionally catch an episode on TV, but I've really, I, I started, when Sam was out here, I started seriously, like, we sat down and really watched it, and man, I love that cartoon. It is yeah, just it's, great. It's, it is, it is it is really good. And, like, uh, you were talking about, like, the animation and stuff and how uh, that... Like, um, I watched the I watched the pilot for the show, and I was actually kind of surprised to see that it was basically the same. Yeah. Um, Usually, like, pilots are totally fucking. Well, yeah, yeah, and and like like all of like the different animation styles were still there, and like so so it's like this this is very much a stylistic choice on like the, the creator's part, and you know mm -hmm. I'm happy about that. That's yeah. That, it, it looks it looks good. Oh yeah, it looks great. I, yeah, I love it's it. it's really good. Oh, and that, also, I remember what the Cloudy of Chance of Meatballs reminded me of. Um, that? that Captain Underpants movie that came out. Oh. I think it was also a DreamWorks movie. Yes. Um, it looks very similar in animation style to that. God, I wish I had seen that. We need The three of us need to... Thel, you need to get that... We need to like sit down and watch it. That was a really good movie. Cool. It was a lot yeah. of fun. I well, heard you still all... haven't seen fucking Guardians of the Galaxy 2, the fuck. We also yeah, need to see the... that. Yeah, it was one of the best Marvel movies come out in the last, like, 22 years. I'm thinking of buying the Blu-ray for that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, straight up. I have the first one on Blu-ray. Yeah. I don't have many yeah. Blu-rays, but I feel like it was good enough to... Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I, uh, I don't have a device that can, and... play, that can play Blu-rays, so... My laptop can play Blu-rays, but when I put a Blu-ray in it, it is unreadable, even though it's very specifically able to. Uh, okay, so here, here's what uh, an animator from Gumball Season 1 was saying about the animation. Uh, and, and we were dead on. Like, Gumball is a, is a mixture of flat and vector flash animation. Okay. Um, the backgrounds are either... 3D renders or Photoshop paintings. <laughs> okay. Um, that that makes sense because I like for photographs they they just the characters fit in just a little too well for them to be. Well, I think uh, photographs. I think some of them <laughs> are basically photographs because it's not that it's not that hard to make a character look like it fits in a in a realistic background. You just get that kind of uncanny valley where they don't match. But, um, but Gumball doesn't feel like it gives you that feeling. It does like, in places. Well, it, I think it... I don't know. I think with Gumball, you watch enough of it that it looks normal. Uh -huh. But I don't think that if you were to see just a screenshot of it, it would like <laughs> be that right. normal looking. Right. Um, but I think the school scenes, because they are rendered, uh, in, in most cases, I think, uh, they're a little bit more texture flat so it right. looks less weird you know yeah. what i mean which um, is is a really good idea because the school scenes are where you can right. see the differences in animation the most because each character they don't have a unique animation style to other characters like banana joe and tina the t-rex for example are both obviously 3d renders but but they they look completely distinct from each other, even though they're both three D renders. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um. Yeah. I yeah. Know, uh, I, like I know Gumball's kind of old. We kind of are going into it just because we watched a bunch of it, but it's old news, but it's still running, so it's not. Not for long. Yeah. What do you mean not for long? The last... Canceled oh, yesterday. No. No. Was... No, it wasn't canceled. The last season is uh the the most current. The currently running yeah. season is going to be the last season. Oh, yeah. that sucks. But there's still a lot of it to watch. Anyway. Well, yeah. There's five seasons. It looks, it, it's great. Yeah. Um, um, 
I like how they, another thing I like about Gumball, just like a little last point, is that they take, they take kind of top, like, mostly topical humor that, like, is still going to be, it, 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 it's, it's topical, but it's not, like, it's not the kind of topical humor that will ever really go away. Do you have like, an example? Yes. Like, when Gumball and Darwin got into that big fight, right? It was obviously riffing on shit like Street Fighter. They they were they were doing like sh like Street Fighter move. They they were insulting each other was what was happening. But they were doing they were using their insults as like Street Fighter moves and shit. Mm -hmm. And in the background there was the the school kids cheering them on cuz they were like, "Yeah, fight, 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 fight." And they all look like like Street and, Fighter like and they all look like like pixel pixel Street Fighter characters, yeah. right? And, and then it switched back the animation style to the regular animation style, and they were like, "This is boring," and they left. And then it went back to the the pixel animation, and it was like I Street would, Fighter is something that's going to stick around for a long I ass. Time. I don't know if I would call that topical. Well, yeah, usually, yeah, and well, usually it's video say, games. Well, usually when you say topical, you mean like. Relating to current news events and stuff. That's so Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, I think that <laughs> I don't. I, it's making I references, guess. but that's not the same thing as being top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's well, it, and and not only that, but it's like uh, it's like a general sort of video game like thing. Like like it's just like a sort of fighting game. It's more of a blanket. It's not it's not like directly at Street Fighter as I much. suppose. It's I mean not it like makes good topical, references. But... It makes good references that uh don't really age very hard. Yeah. So I guess I guess like, maybe if you topical wanna... is the wrong word. Yeah, I think but if it, you want to it... call something topical like um South Park has maintained yeah. being topical the whole time. So, yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, maybe topical was the wrong word, but it, it makes yeah, references I get what you're saying. that are relatively modern. Like it makes a lot of references to to video games. Not necessarily like like you know Person, they'll be not, like not a particular one like, like 90s early 2000s video games, but they're still video games that are really memorable and people don't forget very easily for yeah, example right it's 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 like it's like so, when, it's, uh, so it's not exactly like 2017 is the current year topical but yeah. it's it's like when a show like makes a fucking reference to uh like like a show like 10 years ago made a reference to uh apocalypse now it's like you know that was already pretty cemented if like, if, like this show makes a reference to like mario or street fighter and stuff it's like you well, this has been around long enough well, that we can probably say it's gonna even, be solid even like Stranger Things yeah. made a lot of references to old movies and stuff and yeah, old music and, and like, stuff. And or Dungeons those, and Dragons. All of those were explicitly like older things, mm -hmm. but they were such big popular culture things that it, it like yeah. we still have it in our collection. Stranger Things was great because the whole thing was an homage to the eighties without being terrible. Yeah. That's what I loved about it. <laughs> And I'm so excited without for being two without being ham fisted and without being uh, yeah. like yeah it wasn't like it was without like, banking on nostalgia it wasn't like hey look yeah. you remember the 80s right exactly. this is all about 80s it was it yeah. was this is like, a generic 80s song <laughs> it wasn't like that wow was this Mac and was this Macintosh Plus I love BoJack Horseman holy shit yeah. It's it's great. I really I really want to keep watching it, but I don't know if I can find the time anymore. Joke. Anyway. I I got your I started singing <laughs> Macintosh Plus. What do you mean Pink nobody got it? it? What, what the what the hell are you talking about? That was we are number one. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> It straight up was. It was not. Just the 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 <laughs> tune sounds similar. Macintosh Plus is a little slower. <laughs> anyway, all right. It says I dropped some frames, but like <laughs> you said anyway, but you crazy. didn't have anywhere to segue into. You 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 tricked us. Segway our ass, Sane. Segway. We were expecting. Do we have from any that. other? Uh, I we have the defenders, <laughs> but I'm the only one who's watched that. Yeah, I have yeah, not yeah. watched it yet. I also haven't watched. Let it. me just talk about it briefly. Okay. Uh, did you like it? I did. 
Okay. I thought it redeemed Iron Fist a little bit because okay. I, but Iron Fist was so bad. Like, yeah. To, well, okay, okay, hang on. I have a question. When you say it redeemed Iron Fist, you mean it redeemed Iron Fist the show, or it redeemed Iron Fist as a character? Because Iron Fist is like my favorite C list superhero. Ever. I think it. Re I think it redeemed the character a little bit. Okay. Uh, yes. The show. Okay, so. My problem with Iron Fist, uh -huh. it, the the series, was it was a. Uh, it was like watching a show where the main character was given an idiot ball, the whole mm -hmm. time. He was yeah. just a moron the entire time, made all the wrong decisions. Um, yeah. I thought def what Defenders did was they kind of uh, countered that by making him still make the wrong decisions and all the characters being around him going, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty um, good. Like, like the, um, I don't want to go into like direct spoilery things, but there were a lot of situations that were just straight up like um, Danny Rand acting in a way that was impulsive and uh not helpful to what they were actually doing <laughs> and <laughs> i i don't know the the, that... the best thing about the show easily was uh the group dynamic of all the characters right i th i okay. feel that an ensemble cast pretty much always makes things better because but if you don't like a character you can i mean not go to another character that you my like. point my what i was kind of going into though is uh I'm still dropping frames what the hell like crazy now it's hmm. weird I'm not seeing it on the pod. I'm, I'm not. I'm watching the stream. I'm not seeing. It. Maybe a little bit. I. It looks slideshow to me. Yeah, it's kind. It's kind of mm. bad, actually. I don't know why. It's weird. That's Maybe the recording will be better though. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um. The thing, like, I think in on most shows with ensemble casts, what they'll do is. They make it too convenient for the characters to work together. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this show, it kind of, they started working together just by circumstance. Right. And then they, at multiple times, were trying to take steps to not work together. <laughs> um, but they have to. <laughs> well, no, like, there is a, a whole section where Jessica Jones is like, this is stupid, and <laughs> just leaves. And then Good. she goes on her other like. I hate both of you. God, you gotta fuck yourself. I'm done. She's basically like, all of you are stupid except for Luke Cage. I'm leaving. All of you are st Everyone's <laughs> stupid except That's for me. That's because Luke Cage has a big dick. Yeah, so I fucking love Luke Cage's <laughs> dick, but. But fuck anyway, you know, she kind of Mary. runs off. She kind of runs off and finds some stuff that gives her her own reason to work with them. So alcohol. They, no, not help. So they kind of work in. They kind of work in that even though she doesn't want to be there, they give her a good reason to work with them anyway. Hmm. Like hmm. instead of just being like, "Oh, well, we're working together because it's more convenient." It's like the character you would expect to be the most resistant to actually working with them um, finds her own reason to come back and work with them. Right. Um, yeah. Which I yeah, think works I really well. I have hey a guys, question. What the fuck you. is the hand? Because are you guys gonna have to fucking deal with this shit? I I guess I'll help. Right. Yeah, I think basically really she's cool. like she's I like love ninjas. ninjas. What the fuck? I love ninjas. <laughs> Holy fucking shit, Dawson! Go grab your nerd crate for, from your nerd box and fucking nerd it the shit up. Samurais, k katanas. I think you need a, a cool down on the alcohol there, buddy. Fucking nerds. Fucking, I'm gonna shove you all your assholes into lockers. What did you what? just fucking say to me? I'll kick your ass. I'm, I'm Jessica Jones, bitch. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm gonna come and beat the shit out of Jessica Jones. Fine. Okay. Um, they stole my license. You guys, you guys didn't buy me alcohol. Shut up, Say, dude. Saying I do, I do have a question for you, though. Mm, a serious what? question. Really um, go ahead. Now, Cell did not like Jessica Jones, except yeah. for Kilgrave. Except for Kilgrave. I love Would Kilgrave. you say I'm that playing. Jessica Jones herself was better in Jessica Jones or in The Defenders? Uh, I think she was the same. But not the same? I think. She was the same, but 
because it isn't an ensemble cast, they don't focus too heavily on her. And actually, her her mm-hmm. like involvement with it and story is actually the most like at arm's length compared to mm-hmm. the rest of the characters. She does go off. She has one section where she goes off and finds her own reasons to like come back to them. But okay. those those moments are relatively small relative to what else is happening. It's mainly about Daredevil and the villains of Iron Fist. Like not yeah. even Iron Fist. It's it's more about the villains that were in Iron Fist. Well, and see, Daredevil I like because it's it focuses on the hand. Yeah. I like Iron I, I Fist and Luke much. Cage a lot, and I really enjoyed Luke Cage's Netflix series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I didn't like the villain at the end of that, but yeah, the second really yeah. the second villain felt a lot worse. But like Luke Cage himself was really was really a compelling right. character, and yeah, I know a lot of the... Luke, in Jessica Jones. I was talking like I was talking to Dawson. Luke Cage, when we were first watching it, like in the beginning, I was like, "Wow, Luke Cage is the best character in this show." All of the rest yeah. of them are really, really bland and flat. But Luke Cage is pretty cool. And he even though, I like, I like Luke Cage a lot, even though his powers amount to I'm fucking invincible. Like, that's that's his entire power subset is I'm invincible. And, and he's just, he's a really cool, he's always been a really cool character. I've always loved Luke Cage. I've always loved Iron Fist. I, I've always loved Heroes for Hire, I guess. Well, and I was really disappointed when I saw that Iron Fist fucking suck yeah so (laughs) this series um it borrows the tone of this so i i think what i really liked about uh luke uh, not luke cage uh jessica jones was Mm -hmm. the kind of noir-esque like tone of it Mm -hmm. um it doesn't because this is more about daredevil and the hand um Mm -hmm. it focuses less on that so, so it borrows its tone more heavily from uh, Daredevil, like, for sure. So mm-hmm. if you didn't like Jessica Jones or didn't like the character Jessica Jones, it doesn't focus on that enough to really uh, take away from that, I would say. Right. Um, it, it involves Luke Cage a little bit more than Jessica Jones, too, because uh, it borrows characters like Misty Knight is kind of kind of plays a large role in the series. Um, Who is Misty Knight? I she's the, she is the black movie. police officer. Yeah. That, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Luke Cage deals with. Um and Jessica I did Jones like her. and Jessica Jones runs into Misty Knight quite a bit too. Uh hmm. that's actually Misty Knight is the way that Daredevil, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage meet again. Um Okay. And it, it's kind of funny because the whole time it was I was sort of like expecting Claire Temple to be the person who brings everyone together, but yeah. kind of wasn't. Uh, yeah, that's she weird. She brought Claire together was in every single show, right? She yeah. brought together Luke Cage and Iron Fist, but only after they had already met before. That's weird. Claire was the one who fixed up Daredevil most of the time, right? Yeah, but I, I initially, remember little... yeah, she yeah, was. And fantastic in but daredevil in daredevil yeah, she I very quickly exited that because he was yeah. like i need to be alone because he was pretty I, I, I need to be alone oh, i don't go fix up some other superheroes fuck and then she does <laughs> the end um but she, at least she doesn't fucking pull out stupid claws and fight people herself like she did in iron fist so <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't get that far in Iron Fist. Are you fucking kidding me? We watched, like, two episodes of Iron we Fist. That like sounds four. fucking retarded. I feel it's like Iron stupid. Fist I'm might sorry. be worth just getting a bunch of alcohol and just powering through it to get the gist of what happened. Bitch, like, this was eight fucking dollars. Do you think I can afford that? I can't. Oh, uh, okay. I ain't watching Iron Fist. So it costs eight dollars to watch Iron Fist. Um, uh, mm. uh, I mean, maybe I, I, it's, <laughs> it, it's it's certainly worth fucking joking around on it. I mean, that's how I watch yeah. most of Jesse Jones. But fuck, 
Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Like, Iron Fist was just so bad. Like, the acting was, was really bad. bad. The choreography was bad. Like, it was just all over the place. Yeah, I don't... Um, the, the pacing that was is... so bad. I oh, said it a hundred times. And it times. felt like the character was an God. idiot and there were plot holes everywhere. Like, it was that just really yeah. so bizarre. disappointing to me. I really wish that they had just made a good Iron Fist series. I don't give a fuck about Jessica Jones. I didn't even know who she was until the series came out. Well, I, I think the reason why Jessica I like Jones Luke worked Cage. better... I think the reason why Jessica Jones worked better is because they they were she has probably the the least known character out of all of them, so they were able to kind of like do whatever they wanted. Like not not necessarily do whatever they wanted, but they kind of really made a narrative and a theme around her interaction with Purple Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas in Iron Fist, they're they're kind of more like. No. like structure and what you have to kind of go over in iron fist because you no. have to talk about oh because it, they were leading into the defenders you have to talk about the hand you have to talk about his time in kun one you have to talk about his uh his um i guess rival which i forget his name right now like there and are yeah, more with things Jessica jones you can be just streamlined right into purple man all of this stuff. right it all sort of mm-hmm. uh really meshes really good and i did like that about now Jessica. hang on i have a question that i don't know if he i i, I don't know if sane will be able to answer because i know cell won't be able to answer it was purple man originally a jessica jones villain like i think he might have been a, i think he might have been because a... what i know purple man from is the avengers because he, uh, he was, was an not, Avengers villain. He was not originally an Avengers villain, I don't think. I, I know that. I just but don't know if he was originally from Jessica, like a Jessica Jones villain. I don't remember. I, I don't actually know. Uh, he Purple Man has been on and off in a lot of different characters because he is kind of, like, powerful. Yeah. I don't think... Oh, yeah. I don't know. Um, one way or the other. I could look it up real fast, I guess. I suppose. Uh, but yeah, and also um the sidekick from I didn't know this, but the sidekick from uh Iron Fist that that Asian woman with the sword. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, she's apparently a from a like comic book story that crosses over with Heroes for Hire a lot. Um, who is like teamed up with Misty Knight. So Misty Knight and this this Asian woman with the sword are like actually a team. That's kind later of weird. On. And I didn't realize that. I I didn't know who that character was. Uh, I want them to get there. Wow. The okay. Oh, Purple right. Man's first appearance. Darede- Daredevil number four. So he's wow. a Daredevil villain then. Okay. He that is. Makes sense. Yeah. Apparently he's an OG <laughs> Daredevil villain. Yeah. Like, wow. Number Damn. four. <laughs> wow. Okay. That. So that's interesting. That kind of does make sense, though, because if you want somebody that can counteract the ability to fucking fight anything that, like, Daredevil is, his whole advantage is, basically his advantage is that he cannot see. Yeah. And Purple Man counteracts that advantage by fucking mind controlling you. That, That does make a little bit of sense. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. We'll yeah. Probably so talk that's about defenders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there is... anything else? Well, I, I mean, any neither of else? us have neither of us have seen the defenders, so. No, I don't, don't mean about the defenders. About what? What yeah. is there anything else we've seen we want to talk about before we move into some games? We have been talking about a lot of movies and. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, we could talk about... Movies. We sh- Hitman's uh, Bodyguard. Hitman's Bodyguard. We should probably talk about that a little bit. Man. Let me just say... Okay. Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds played off each other so fucking well. I, I cannot... That was the... Probably the most hilarious movie I've seen in like a couple of months at l- very least. 
It was a very good action comedy. It was it was it was just great and I, I loved both of them in it. And you know And the trailer does do a good job of um getting the feel of the movie, so it, it's Oh yeah. So like if you watch the trailer it'll it'll give you enough to know whether or not you would like the movie. Definitely. I'm glad um, that Ryan Reynolds is sort of getting into movies in which he is funny. I like Ryan Reynolds in action comedies. I didn't even see Deadpool, but I know that he's good at it. I mean, yeah, you saw the trailers. Exactly. You um, should probably watch Deadpool, too. I, yeah. I should. And Logan. You should probably watch Logan. I, I, oh, I don't he, know, like... He's, like, he's seen Logan, I know oh, yes, that. I have seen but but, not, but yeah, you're right. We should watch it again because goddamn. But like, Deadpool. not even considering Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Not even considering that. Like the whole time we were watching that movie, I was thinking, "Wow, Ryan Reynolds is kind of Deadpool." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah, I was like, I was like, he's just kind of riffing on people while he's sitting there and beating the shit out of them. Or whatever. You know, I like it. And then, obviously, Samuel L. Jackson is always going to be great. He's he's yeah. great in, like, I, I can't think of a he single role. He has to be the most consistently funny actor. And he doesn't even have to make jokes to be funny. He just kind of has to be himself. He just has to you kind know? of talk. To be yeah, funny. exactly. Like, he was funny bald black man and that was him and that was samuel l jackson he was great and the hitman's buddy guard had a like it had very little emotional scenes but even the emotional scenes were like they were nice and well written and like it felt like something that the the characters would do you know yeah, and they were and usually then, even then they comedy. More, they kind of mixed in humor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it didn't it didn't feel super shoehorned. Like right? there was a scene where Samuel L. Jackson went ridiculously far out of his way to leave a set of flowers somewhere for his wife. Well, I'm not even gonna get into spoilers for that, but like that whole scene was hilarious. Like you you. Like Ryan Reynolds was following him, and it was like, "That's great. That's this everything that Ryan Ryan Reynolds is doing is great." And then Samuel L. Jackson just doing this, like the character that we've established for the whole movie. Like, yeah, that's something he would definitely do. You know, mm -hmm. um, I just Thel, did you see the Hitman's Bodyguard? No, I have not. I, I haven't gotten I, to see any movies. I like, haven't gotten to see any movies in theaters, yeah. yeah. I, I really feel like you should, even if you just, like, see it once it gets a Blu-ray release. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it it, it is short, a really good movie. Well, long story short, what I'm basically <laughs> planning to do, like, especially this year, is just, like, uh, usually when it comes to the end of the year, I, I go through, like, my list of fucking movies that, like, I was supposed to watch, like, at some point during the year. It's like, I have a huge bunch of stuff on my watch list for this year. Like, Are you mm -hmm. planning on seeing uh, Kingsman 2 in the theaters? Uh, yeah. I, I think I'll pro that's probably one I'm going to see in the theaters, yeah. <laughs> that one I don't know if, like, any, like, like when it releases or something, but I'll probably eventually see it. Right. Movie. Dawson hasn't seen Kingsman 1 either, so we should watch that with him. Yeah, um, agreed. Here's another thing I liked about Kingsman... No. Hitman's no. Bodyguard. Hitman. There you go. Bodyguard. Um, uh, Hitman from the Hitman series is bodyguard. No, no, no. We don't talk no. about that. We don't talk about Hitman from the Hitman series anymore. Um, Not after what he did. The okay. I like the kind of despair. Like it was an action comedy, right? So it was kind of almost riffing on most like generic action movies. Ryan Reynolds' character was very, like, operator kind of, like, Ocean's Eleven ass, you know, like, I plan out every single little moment of my life, and every single little moment of every job. I really liked that 
in the disparity that Samuel L. Jackson's character was kind of like just like John fucking Rambo. Like he was like, yeah, I don't plan fucking anything. I just, you know, just go with the flow and I kill everybody and I'm the best there is. <laughs> Technically, John yeah, Rambo actually set up a bunch of traps and stuff, and was very, it was very thoughtful about all of this stuff. Do you want to fucking me. fight me? <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I mean, I mean, you're Rambo. right. I mean, you're right. But like, it was like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Predator. But you like you you get my point though, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like he was very uh, by the seat Samuel of his Jackson pants. was very by the seat of his pants, and he was really good at being by the seat of his pants and he was the, the the best there was and he was what was he he was like a professional yeah he was, he a, was, he a, was professional a hitman hit and then ryan reynolds was a professional bodyguard right and ryan reynolds was like super operator like he was like I, I don't know if operator means anything to either of you guys, but no, yeah, yeah, he, I know it. I know. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like he was mm. very like splinter cell ass. Like I'm gonna go through and eliminate every single fucking hostile before I even pick up my target. And then Samuel L. Jackson was super like, "Oh shit, there's some dudes attacking us. Let's fucking fight them." And and just the oh, we disparity. need to escape. Let's jump off the building. Yeah, or let's jump off the building. The disparity between those two characters just meshed so well together, and they they were forced to work together for most of the movie. And then the fact that because of they were forced to work together for most of the movie, they were they 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 wound up liking each other. Like, well, let's not go Jackson into spoilers, but yeah, basically they they were kind of forced to like each other and. They they wound up liking each other and it was it was just great. Like their their characters played off each other so well is is the end goal of what I'm trying to say here. Right. I, I just loved how their characters are so vastly different and they loved each other so much in the end. That that was probably my favorite part, how how right. much they loved each other in the end. Okay, well, why don't we take a break? Because we've been going on for like an hour. Yeah, uh, I'm just you. You're just saying that. I'm thinking we should watch the Lethal Weapon movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you want to take how about 13 minutes? That way we come back at or 12 minutes. That way we come back at uh 5:20. 72 so, minutes. I'm gonna take a fucking pass out. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Maybe I should go grab a. Uh, 13, thir 13 is good. 13 is good. 13, 13 minutes? Uh, let's do it. Yeah, okay. I'll be right back. Okay. I will also be right back. Goodbye, people on the stream. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, oh. we're back. Welcome. We are back. Hello, how's it going, my friends? So, we should talk about video games now. Uh, video games or video, uh, like video games we played or video game news or what's Video that? games we played. Okay, it, it seems uh, since we've we've been so long, it might be just easier to talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been maybe focus on the time. news less this time. Okay. Um. Oh well, I'm sorry. I just saw something that was terrible. But um. Uh, no. Should I start? Yeah. Sure. Why you don't you start on video games that you have played? <laughs> okay. No problem, my man. <laughs> um. Uh. Video games I've been playing. I've been playing a lot more near. Um, it's, uh, I, I, at this point, I have come to a point in, in the game in which, uh, I have, like, a shit ton of side quests, and I notice it's, it's, like, it's at one of those points where it's, like, okay, I have so many side quests, I, like, can't even do, like, the normal story, but I come to the realization that playing this game, I don't even give a fuck because all of the stuff in the game is really, really good. The side <laughs> quests are really, really fun. Uh, fun to play all each of each of like you get these side quests for these little side characters like it's a robot who likes animals <laughs> it's a robot mom and their son and they all like have these little nice stories that you get to do and do the side quests and they're fun to do also the character interactions that you get from the side quests are really fun and the gameplay is fucking really really fun like it's a jrpg but uh, i have a question 
Okay, go ahead. Uh, how how different does the gameplay become throughout the game? Like, do you get more like combos and stuff as you progress, or is it like um, one of those things where you're given all your tools right from the beginning? Uh, you're not given all your tools from the beginning. You do get a bunch of different uh like abilities, but the actual gameplay, I don't really feel like it changes all that much. Like I'm still basically uh walking up to people and beating the shit out of them with my sword and that's so like, does it start to get stale or is it It's no, it's kind of it's, it's kind it, of like a normal like crazy fucking like Devil May yeah. Cry type. Well, yeah, and that's one. what I was going to say. Uh it, it is a JRPG, but a jrpg in that you have levels and that like sort of basically means like you can do this amount of damage to this level of enemy it's like i can take on a level 40 enemy at level 18 i'm doing like no damage to it but i can win the war of attrition if i'm good enough at dodging and i right. really love that about that game. well i was but just yeah, kind it... of wondering because i had heard some some mixture of like people who might not like spectacle fighters as much. Oh yeah. Well, uh, if if you don't like spectacle fighters, if you're going in like uh, expecting like a more of a sort of JRPG thing, if you don't like spectacle fighters, it can definitely get stale because uh, it doesn't have like the bayonetta levels of like amount of shit that you can do. Right. Uh. It, it, but it does have like you can get different like abilities that your uh, little robot does. Like it can block stuff. It can shoot missiles instead of like the bullets. Uh, you can upgrade your stuff, uh, switch out your different, um, like, plug-in shifts so you get, like, more passive abilities. Uh, you can oh, just, yeah. like, have, like, a one that makes you go, like, really fast, one that just does a bunch of damage, stuff like that. Um, That's kind yeah. of normal JRPG flair, or, um, yeah. kind of normal Spectacle Fighter flair. Yeah. Um... And that's really nice, but of course where it really shines is in the plot, and all of the characters that directly correlate to the message and the plot. It's beautiful. Um, I love this game. If you told us what you think the message was, would that be a spoiler to the game? Probably. No, uh, the message is like almost Im immediate, like as you start. Um, it's just that... Uh, actually, actually, I'll I'll give some examples. Um, part it's it's the whole humanity transcends uh flesh sort of thing. Like uh, okay. the robots eventually do f do feel humanity, and it's like it starts out immediately where you're introduced to like this uh group of robots who have to fight this other group of robots, and it's like one of them is this uh super militarized uh robots fighting the killbots. Um, you 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 start out with uh your character two B, who's a very uh super heavy military combat unit, and very much exemplifies that. Mm -hmm. uh, you and she talks about how she's constantly like, well, we have to be prepared for the job. We have to be. Yorha um, Yorha says that we have to act like this and that we cannot show emotion and stuff. And then you get like your operator six O's talking about how she has a crush on one of the other operators, how she, you know, thinks 2B would look really great with flowers in her hair and stuff. It's like, and, and it's like, this is less, such a stark contrast to what you sort of expect. And then you go into like the kill bots and some of the kill bots are starting to get emotions. And Nine S is like, these, these things can't have emotions and they're showing emotions. It's, 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 and everyone's getting along and it's great. And it's going to end so tragically. I'm sure it's going to be fucking horrible. Nine S is the cute little support boy, right? Yeah, he's the he's yeah. the he's the he's the Choda of the group, and he's he's, the, he's, he's the like my favorite guy. character. He's so good. I love is Nine S. Yeah, God, they're all the everything characters. In this game are everything great. I've heard about Nine S is just like, wow, he can heal you. Uh, that's, no, that's a he's he's a, he's about. he's almost like a little bit jaded. Um, uh, each yeah. of them has their like like Tubi and Nine S mm -hmm. both have their own like thing that they are very focused on, and that the other one sort of doesn't like. Like, uh, 2B is very focused on, like, how the robots are thinking and how, like, they're, uh, very, uh, you know, how, how they're changing and how she can sort of, because, like, she can use that in, like, combat situations. So she's very, like, thinking about, like, you know, maybe these robots are actually having all of these emotions. And 9S is like, no, they're all killbots. We need to make sure that we kill them. 2B, don't think about that. It's bad. And then, meanwhile, 9S is like, wow. Humans are so cool. I love humans. Wow, look at this. This was an old mini mall. I want to buy you a t-shirt, Tubi. And Tubi's like, focus on the mission, 9S. God damn it. We have mm. things we have to do. Did and you... it's great. They have a yeah. great fucking... And yes, yes, the answer to that question you were about to get asked is yes. Um, uh, They have a great dynamic. I don't know it, though. Do you have dynamic. enough money to buy Tubi a t-shirt? Uh, In this game? Fuck yeah, I do. Let me tell you. You get money like cr it's crazy, but then you also spend it like crazy. 
Yeah, you gotta, now, you gotta... now, now that you say that, I actually have to ask the question because I've never even touched the game. Can you actually buy 2B t-shirts? Uh, not that I found. I don't think that you can there, buy... There's, uh... no cus- there's no cosmetic customization? Apparently, there's, like, some because there's, like, some DLC stuff that you can get, but, like, I haven't found any. I mean, you can make 2B skirt explode. I mean, that's, that's, that's about it. You can make her, her show off her butt, but I mean, it's like, you, it takes away all of your health, and unless you have one of those plugging chips that, like, just restores all of your health, it's like, I have to use, like, a healing, I don't want to do that, but it's, it's not worth it. Fuck that. Well, have you been playing anything else? Being a booty game. Um, I'm trying I to think. think, well, um, I don't, I don't really... Uh, I played Children of the Zodriac a little bit, but we're gonna talk about that later, so. We took Cell down. Oh, yeah, that's right. We stapled him to the floor and forced him to play League of Legends. You ever, you guys ever see a Clockwork Orange? The world's oldest news. Yeah, you ever, you Okay, so why don't you say what you want to say? Because the rest of, because me and Sane both have plenty of shit to say about it, but all oldest shit. Um. It's okay. I think How does I have it compared to the other MOBAs you've played? Uh, I think I have more fun with uh, Heroes of the Storm. Absolutely. Uh, just in general. Um, uh, I, I played a little bit of Dota, but I don't feel like enough to really like make an opinion about it. Mm-hmm. So just your basic hands-on time with uh, League of Legends. You don't really have strong opinions about it yet? Yeah, not really. I don't. I don't feel like I'm uh, in the know enough. I like. I haven't played enough characters. I played like an eighty carry and a tank, and that's about it. Yeah, my issue with League of Legends, or, well, I I don't know. My issue with Dota Two is uh, I felt like the interface is really clunky. Yeah. And uh, League of Legends kind of solves a lot of those problems for me. And considering League of Legends is the first MOBA I played, like, I expect a lot of those quality of life changes to be in other MOBAs and when they're not it bugs me so yeah uh, that's my biggest issue with Dota is a lot of those quality of life things like basic things like um a lockable camera a like turn speed not being in it like being able to just move in any direction well, feels better in, in it, my we, opinion we did learn that a lockable camera is in Dota 2 if you double click your character portrait However, the turn speed thing, that's definitely a, like, game balance thing. And if you don't like it, it's just not something that you want to deal with. Because yeah. that, that, that's something that they, well, they, they absolutely cannot change, no matter what. I mean, they could. They could, we would just have to change a bunch of characters, too. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of little quality of life things. It feels too zoomed in, 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 uh dota it feels like Mm -hmm. um when you're playing dota 2 it feels to me like i'm fighting the camera more than other players yeah Uh, actually that's how i felt felt a little bit on league of legends um i think that the camera is probably the best out of all of them in heroes of the storm because you do have the fact that you can like move your camera around your character you can keep yeah, it locked yeah it, it's on a your locked camera but you can still but um, you can move push it to the in different directions yeah, yeah. Um, that is fantastic i, I, I do all... wish that i do wish that heroes of the storm had a, a dedicated unlock camera button the same way mm-hmm. league of legends does cuz one of the things yeah. i like to do on league of legends is unlock my camera and look ahead whereas yeah. in heroes of the storm you have to click on the map in order to like detangle it for a little bit which is kind of annoying yeah. to me and um, i almost felt like i almost felt like i had to do that on legal it's just like uh i think like that the... yeah on some maps especially if you're on the uh the i want to say purple team where you're on the bottom of the map um oh, yeah. it's easy it's harder to see above you than well, you it is to... on yeah. blue where you have to look below you you have to make your your heads up displays much smaller no, I mean Which even even advantage. besides that, even even discounting that, because like the resolution directly correlates with how much you can actually see, um, and that's one thing I noticed when I was playing on your computer, Dawson. Your screen mm-hmm. is slightly wider of an aspect ratio than mine, which means it cuts off less of the up and down compared to um, mm-hmm. my my 
desktop. So that's right. weird. Yeah, it feels like it shouldn't be that way, but that's the experience that I was. I think I was getting. I don't know. Um, yeah. Heroes of the Storm definitely feels like you have the most control over the camera, even yeah. when it's locked. Uh, whereas I feel, like, I feel it, like the other two aren't quite as good about that. I, I feel like if both of those other... Like, let's be real here. The three big competing MOBA, competing MOBAs are Heroes of the Storm, League of Legends, and Dota 2. Those are the three I don't even know ones. if I would agree with that. I would think I think Heroes of the Storm is probably uh, not one of the highest ones. I think Smite is probably that third... I don't know, guys. Tier. Hero and New Earth is coming back. I'm it telling you. It is fucking not. It is you dead. get the. You get a, Heroes. Heroes of New Earth is completely dead, dude. No. I don't know, guys. I think Battleborn's got a pretty good future. <laughs> Heroes of New Earth is so dead that they made a different MOBA called Strife. That's how dead Heroes of New Earth is. And they then, made uh, a and then new that MOBA. didn't succeed. I think they closed that already. No, it's on Steam. Oh yeah, that's right. They brought it to Steam, but I don't think it's played much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I Dota that... Two and League of Legends are the big competitors, but Heroes of the Storm has such great quality of life improve improvements that I really feel like they could benefit. Both of those games could benefit from. Well, Heroes I think the problem with Heroes of the Storm, Storm though is, in some ways, it's too simplified. The nice yeah, thing about League right. of Legends, you have a little bit more variety in, in counter building with items. Yeah. yeah, if you start getting fucked in Heroes of the Storm, it's like your whole team has to do good in order to, for you to catch up and start doing good. Yeah, you but can't in League rely of Legends, on other you people. Can, you can personally do really good, and you can at least kill one or two people on the enemy team. So, Heroes of the Storm is just too reliant on other people, yeah. you know? That is, that is true. It is pretty reliant. And that, that's basically my feelings on all of this. Um, Heroes of the Storm is fun, but it's too reliant on other people. And other MOBAs are like, if you personally start doing bad, then you are going to lose the game for your team. Like I mean, there's still problem. some extent to that in in League of Legends. Like, one person can drag you down, but it, it's yeah. amplified in Heroes of the Storm. The benefit of Heroes of the Storm, though, is the games are so much shorter, and it snowballs so much faster that it's easier to deal. Like, it's... I don't know. If you get your you're ass not stuck, kicked... You're not stuck in a game for an hour like we were last night. Yeah, in, if if you her, start getting your ass kicked, then you're gonna get your ass kicked for like twenty minutes, and you can just start a new game. Yeah. Whereas in League or Dota, you're gonna get your ass kicked for like an hour, and then you're like, "Why am I still playing this?" Yeah. Instead of here's the storm, where it's like, "Well, whatever. The next game will be better." Yeah, and it's not a MOBA, but I also really like uh for for like the reasons you guys were talking about, like those i also really like overwatch because if johnny hanzo is being bad who gives a fuck I oh, yeah about that. The, or... thing, the thing i liked about overwatch when it first came out was it gave me that no that moba feel without playing a moba yeah um or if johnny hanzo on the other team is killing all six of you every time you spawn it's still gonna be over in like 10 minutes yeah maybe. yeah and, and, think... and like johnny hanzo can just be like really really good on the other team and carry his other team when the rest of his team is bumbling fucking idiots and i love that i can mm -hmm. be just good and at pharah the thing about le playing league of legends again and and trying dota again kind of made me like i don't know it felt like it was an itch i needed a scratch but i don't know how interested i am in continuing to play those games anymore mm. uh even heroes of the storm is starting to get boring to me again mm. um and I think that has a lot to do with just rotating through games. Like, I played a lot of Overwatch for a while. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not super interested in playing Overwatch that much lately. But, you know. Right. That makes sense. Uh, I think I just, I don't know. I Especially with League of Legends. I played so much League of Legends. I played over, like, over 1,500 games, probably. Um, easy. Uh, and I just don't know 
like occasionally I go back and I want to play some of the characters that I used to enjoy playing, but I don't know how much I can like really. I mean, live off of that. You know what I mean? I don't know. You know, yeah. everybody qu quits League of Legends every once in a while, and they come back to it every once in a while. The reason that I quit League of Legends is because I just kind of didn't, wasn't interested in playing the game. And then I came back to League of Legends because I wanted to play specifically the character Singed. That's why I started playing League of Legends again. And I played him for like four or five games and I was like, you know... I really enjoy playing this character. He's fun as hell, but the game as a whole is not interesting to me. And so then I came back to it because you, Saints, showed a little bit of an interest in it, and Thel, you showed a little bit less resistance to it. <laughs> like, that's that's the reason that I played it after. Like, like, once I found out, okay, Singe is fun, but the game as a whole is not fun... When when you two started playing it, I was like, okay, I'll play it again. But you know, like I'm not wholly resistant to the playing it. I'm not back to it is because of particular characters. Yeah, I'm not wholly resistant to playing it some more. I just feel like it doesn't hold my attention the same way that it used to. Um, yeah, I think exactly. that my interest in it has actually like actually died for the most oh, part. Oh, for sure, me and, too. And occasionally, I'll come back and want to try you know, to play a couple games, but I just don't think that I have the time, patience, or energy to actually, like, take it even remotely seriously again. Yeah, no, exactly. I played it for... for years, even before I met you. We, yeah, we actually met because of League of Legends. Yeah, that's, that's how we became friends, and then you introduced me to Cell. Like, League of Legends was what brought us together, but it's what tore us apart. I no, it is not. No, <laughs> fuck you. We have I, not been torn apart, so you know it tried I, though. I have lost I, friends. I have played that game since beta, and it just is not as fun to me anymore as it has been. I would prefer to play Heroes of the Storm or even Dota. I I don't to me want to play Dota. <laughs> I know. I I am I don't know. It's weird. It's weird because playing League of Legends again actually kind of makes me want to play Smite again. It's like, weird. it's, I don't know, it's because when I stopped playing League of Legends, I tried Dota and didn't like it. Then I tried to play Smite, and I did kind of like Smite, and I played Smite for a little while. Then eventually then I, I quit, that, quit that. Eventually, then I moved on to, like, Overwatch and, and some kind of different shooters and stuff. And then more recently, I started playing Heroes of the Storm. And that kind of made me loop back around to try League of Legends again. But, because there are things about Heroes of the Storm I don't like that aren't the same in he League of Legends. There's a lot of yeah. stuff in League of Legends that I don't like that are fixed in Heroes of the Storm. So, mm -hmm. I'm in a kind of a weird place where it's sort of sending me through this loop of these games. And I play them for a little while and remember why I didn't like them. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... I don't know. What I am excited for in Heroes of the Storm is Kel'Thuzad, because goddamn, he looks really fun to play, and he is probably one of my favorite raid bosses of all time in World of Warcraft. Uh, I can't cool. really elaborate on that, because people who don't play World of Warcraft wouldn't understand it, but... Yeah, and I don't even know who that he's is, He's a so. great character. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you play Warcraft 3... You... Shut up, though. Warcraft 3 I never played Warcraft 3 either. Exist. I never played a Warcraft game. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. Unless you count Heroes of the Storm. I so. count Heroes of the Storm. I'd almost count Heroes of the Storm just because of the amount of prevalence of Warcraft characters in that game. Well, it's because Warcraft kind of has more characters than any other Blizzard IP. Decker Kane Heroes of the Storm character win. Oh, that would be silly. <laughs> that would oh. be great. 
Uh, I want, I want. We're introducing Deckard Kane. Here you can uh, buy items from Deckard Kane because he can identify them, and uh, he's just wherever you want. And his, uh, his ultimate is a fear. He says, "Stay a while and listen," and everyone fucks off away from him. His ultimate is he fucking dies like in Diablo <laughs> Three. Remember that, guys. <laughs> uh, let's move on to. Okay. How about Sonic Mania? Uh, oh. I have my not god played it yet. Did you forget that we played that this week? Oh, Sonic yeah. Mania was fucking yeah. awesome. Good. I'm I'm I, happy. We I'm played hyped. the Switch version at Dolson's yeah. house. Could not believe how good Sonic Mania was. The only problem was me and Sane were trying to play it multiplayer. There's <laughs> a, it has a Sonic in Tails mode. Which yeah, and means, it was kind of fucking garbage. Which means that player two gets to control Tails, except it doesn't split screen out. It just follows Sonic. So yeah, yeah. So that's, occasionally, that's, that's the same multiplayer in the old games. So occasionally, I would appear as as Tails, maybe keep up for a little while, and then miss a jump, and then be gone. Until and then I, I would be like, until I like Sane. respawned. At one point, I would be like, Sane, I want to go really fast. But I'm bad at this platforming section. Please carry me across the platforming section. That was the then, extent of Tails. And mode. then I would carry him up and be like, oh, you're too fat. And then we wouldn't actually make it. Oh. So yeah. that happened a lot too. But However. Just the Sonic. If you play it so single player, it is a really good this Sonic is, game. This is very, very early in the game. It's what? Zone 2? Um, one. The water one? The mean bean plant? machine. Yeah, oh, yeah, the plant. end of Chemical Plant. You play the Mean Bean Machine. The final boss of Chemical Plant is you... It's not the final boss. Is it? Oh, it's okay, like, the it's second like 50, boss. It's like the 50% mark right. in Act At, at two. one point the act in, one boss. in Chemical no, Zone No, it's not in the Act, act 1 two. boss. It is act halfway 1 is through. Act 1 is always, no, always it, it, uh, Green Hill Zone. Always. It, okay, shut up. It's halfway... Okay. The Mean Bean Machine is halfway through Act 2. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, zone two, act no, one. No, no, it's no. They don't do it that way. They have act one and act two, and those are separate levels. Yeah. Oh. And then oh. halfway through act two, you do the mean bean machine, and then afterwards you pop out and hit a uh, checkpoint. Yeah. So the, the it's like a mini bean, boss. It, it's great because you get just stuck into a place where, as far as the the game is concerned, Sonic is stuck and he cannot do anything. And then Robotnik is right next to you, and you play literally a level of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Yeah, like a versus mode. Like straight up Dr. Mean Bean Machine. And it's great. Except the problem was... The we bugged problem out three was, times in a row. Yeah, oh. it bugged out three times in a row. We beat him three times. and. Sonic was unable to leave the area. Like we beat him, he exploded, and then left, and, and then we were stuck left, there. And then we were stuck there. The fourth time we were able to leave through like a spin dash area, but the th the first three times it bugged out really hard. So I feel like they could use some some bug work on Sonic Mania. But man, I feel like that was the that was Sonic, the only that was the only real bug that we experienced though. Yeah. Oh, and I mean, one time, and one time we were stuck minor. at the ending screen. We couldn't. <laughs> yeah. There, there was, was one there time was... where we were stuck on the ending screen and it wouldn't progress. There I wouldn't say some... it was super buggy, but we did run into some bugs. Yeah, mm. I, I feel I mean, like you could use like a hot fix or something. But... And maybe that's why it was uh, it's it, it was like delayed on PC, because like it comes maybe. out tomorrow on PC. Delayed. It was originally going to come out at the same time, but you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably worth getting the Switch version because it makes it portable. Someone oh, took yeah. a someone took a picture of it and of the Nintendo Switch running Sonic Mania and going, "Hey, look! It's the Game Gear 2017." <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, no, but yeah, the Sonic Mania is fantastic. It is like people said this about Sonic Four. A, a very small amount of people said this about <laughs> Sonic Rush, but Sonic Mania is actually the sonic 4 that you have wanted the whole time yeah it, it feels it, like it feels like is a legitimate 1990s sonic game. it feels like the equivalent of Mega Man 9 
Mm-hmm. Like, when Mega yeah. Man 9 came out, there was, like, 10 years since Mega Man 8, uh, because they started doing Mega Man X. But Mega Man 9 was, like, the same kind of, like, it was right on the same kind of game. Uh, except I liked Sonic better, but... <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, Sonic, so Sonic Mania is absolutely great. Yeah. Sonic Mania is legitimately an old school Sonic game that doesn't have any of this in any of the bullshit that the modern Sonic games want to add. Like a lot of problems with the like like for example Sonic 4 had the the homing attack in it and that was one of the big bullshit reasons that people didn't like Sonic 4. Um <clears throat> Well, I, I also just don't think that the level design was or, as or good Sonic. in Sonic 4. Whereas in Sonic Mania, the level design is great. It's huge, sprawling yeah. angles. Uh, is there anything else we want to talk about? We're starting to run. Well, we got about 20 minutes left-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else I have mean, we played? I, I played a I little bit more of uh, Breath of the Wild. Zelda Breath of the Wild, but... I don't really have much to say. It's still really good. Yeah. If you have a Switch, you should buy it. If you have a Wii U, you yeah. should buy it. You should buy a Switch for it. <laughs> I mean, one of, the one, big, but... one of the big criticisms of Breath of the Wild is that it is, uh, it's just a generic open world RPG kind of thing, but I really feel like... I don't think I've ever heard anyone complain about that, because yeah, it is like not it... that... <laughs> Yeah, I, I've I've heard a lot of people say that it uh, innovated on the open world. Yeah, you know, uh, it really does because the climbing system just makes everything more interesting. I don't know. Also, more like explorable. the water systems are apparently really good. Um, the so. thing that everybody complains about, and the thing that <laughs> the thing that caused Jim Sterling to reduce his score to like a seven is is like the uh, weapon durability system. Which, uh-huh. I didn't like at first, but I think that it did a good job of forcing you to try different weapons. Uh, right. And I don't mind a little bit of inventory management. They could have streamlined in places for sure, but... Oh, yeah. Like, having to... Like, for instance, you can't drop a bow without going into the menu, which sucks. Uh, you can't drop some melee weapons, like the ice wand, the blizzard wand, or whatever. You have to go into the inventory to get rid of that. So anything that yeah. you can't throw away, you have to actually like go into the menu, which kind of sucks. But mm-hmm. um, I think that it would have done better to make the durability in the, of the starting items a bit more so that it yeah. wasn't like you hit three things and then lost it. Yeah. Um, but like, Even if it was like a Deku stick or something. Like... Yeah, because by, me, by like mid-game, the late game, you can have like, a couple of swords last you for hours and hours. Easy. Um, so, I don't know. It's just a little... It's one of those things that's gonna bug people. uh, I don't think you got this far, Satan, but once you get the Master Sword, it's like... The, like, you have that weapon permanently, but if you use it on things that aren't specific enemies trying to be spoiler free if they aren't specific enemies that the master sword is supposed to be used against it, it runs out of durability and you have to wait a set amount of time to use it again or but or the uh, or the light scale trident you have to fix but you still yeah. have like the the pieces of it but yeah, yeah. i don't want to i don't want to talk about specific spoilers about s- certain items and stuff because breath of the wild is such a huge game that people are still playing it so yeah. I don't want. I mean, talk about obviously it. the master sword is in it. I it's mean, just, that's oh, I, I mean, but it, talking yeah. about the specific properties of it is going to bug people, and we're all yeah. we've already probably bothered people by talking even about that much. Probably. So you kill Ganon at the end. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, is there anything else we want to talk about? That's. I think that's the only things I've played. I yeah. think that's mostly the extent of what I've been oh. playing in the last. Couple How about weeks. snipper clips? Oh God! You and snipper I, you clips? and I played all of s- snipper clips in like one sitting. It was like an hour, maybe two. Uh, it was like, it was like two, two, three hours, something like that. 
Snipper Clips was really fun. I enjoyed solving the puzzles with one of my close friends. But I feel like if I were trying to do all of that game by myself, it would not have been nearly as entertaining. But that like, game is not designed to be played by yourself anyway. Yeah, but literally there's an you option can't to do it. No, there isn't. You would sure? have to you would have to take both controllers and do it yourself. Are you, really? Yeah. I thought there was a, a single player option where you could just snip like swap between the two snipper snippers. I don't think so. Maybe. Hmm. Well, either way, Snipper Clips was really fun to try to like solve all of the puzzles with a friend because, you know, things that I, I played it with Sane, things that Sane wouldn't have thought of, I did think of, and things that I wouldn't have thought of, Sane had thought of. So like, it, it was pretty pretty nice to to play. Our a part just, of our problem is I'm not, I'm. The kind of person who really likes puzzle games, so I would solve it really, really quickly, <laughs> and then not even like say what we should do. I would just start doing things. Yeah. So that was a problem with just with how I play games like that. Like it, it was the same thing for like Portal Two. Like Honestly, I'm so quick with certain things that I just most start of... doing them. <laughs> most of the things that I solved instead of you were just like I was like wait a second, instead of solving it the way you're supposed to solve the game, why don't we just cheese it this way that I <laughs> thought of? Like, like we would just, like, catch a bunch of goop in a bucket that we created ourselves into, and... Well, like, I think that was... I, I don't, I don't think hell. that was the cheesy way to do it. I think the cheesy way to, of doing it was uh, snipping ourselves into, like, brackets and just <laughs> covering the pipes... Yeah, because I don't think that's how you were supposed to do it. I was, uh, I no, think you and I were yeah. try initially trying to do it, uh, the bucket way, which is probably how you're supposed to do it, not just yeah. blocking off the actual pipes. Yeah, blocking but... off things that shot things that stuff that you were supposed to solve. I, snipper clips was fun. I would say that if you have a good buddy that's near you or that you know you want to play it for a couple of hours, it it is definitely worth the price point. I it's think just... it's good. For, I I think it's prob like if you ever intend to take your switch somewhere and and play with someone else, it's probably a good thing to have because it's only like fifteen bucks I think ten fifteen yeah. bucks. So it's a good yeah. thing to have just on your switch that you can play with someone quickly. And it does have some multiplayer modes like air hockey, which was kind of fun. Um, yeah, I feel like it would have been more fun with a couple of people. It probably would have been more fun if you didn't dislike air hockey. That's true. <laughs> Wait, you dislike air hockey? I hate air hockey. Why? Well, no, 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 that's not true. I like air hockey when I can take my hand and move the thing anywhere I want as fast as oh, I can. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. I fair. do not like air hockey when I have a set movement speed that I have to move right. my... Right, yeah, all right, I understand. That was, that I was fucking, the problem with that. I, I fucking love air hockey. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm real fucking good at air hockey, and I love it. Yeah, mm. I don't... I don't mind virtual air hockey either, but mm. virtual air like I, I like virtual air hockey on like touch pads where I can like Dawson said move it as fast as I want. Yeah, I'm That's... good at air hockey in like an actual arcade with physical uh, a physical puck where I can just go. Bah, 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 bah. Well, I think that even even virtual air hockey would probably be fun with certain people. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I can understand, like, with a controller, air hockey being kind of a bitch. Yeah. Also, it was funny because you could just go over to your other person's goal and snip them dead and then run back to your goal and shoot it in. It was, it was, it was, it was funny. It was entertaining, but I, you know, it, I, I don't know. I don't even it think was, that's the best strategy, to be honest. <laughs> probably not. Um... Yes. Any other games that you can think uh, of? I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's it. Do we want to go through the news stories that we've had? Like, no, we only got fast? like we got like ten minutes. Is there is there anything in particular you really want to talk about? Because um, I don't think we should try to go through all the news just because it's like we got ten minutes um, or something. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. 
There's nothing I really, really want to talk about. Like, there's yeah, nothing, nothing that I, I really want to, like, about. only spend 10 minutes on. You know what I'm saying? Like, how about stuff that I do want to talk about? I want to spend like more than 10 minutes on, and this other stuff is like, you know, whatever. I don't think it would feel 10 What minutes. about the Mercy update? Oh, we oh, can talk about Overwatch. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let, about Overwatch. Let, let me start on that. All right, go ahead. So, Mercy has received a new ultimate called Valkyrie mode. She on the can, PTR. On, yeah. the P, on the PTR. It is not on, it is not live yet. But basically, what she can do. She activates Ultimate Valkyrie mode. It works for 20 seconds. Instead of her ultimate. Mm -hmm. Instead yeah. of instead of her resurrected Resurrect ultimate. ultimate. Yeah. And the resurrection ability. is now an her E ability, which can resurrect one person every 30 seconds. Now, when you activate Valkyrie mode, it does a couple of things. It does quite a few things, actually. It resets your resurrection ultimate, so you can resurrect somebody, alt, resurrect somebody else. That's pretty decent. Resurrect two people. Um, it allows you to fly completely freely, move in three dimensions as though you were swimming around in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, it makes your healing beam and damage beam affect up to five people if they are close enough. It, it chains, chain links to people. Mm -hmm. And, oh yeah, I yeah. guess also it makes your gun a little stronger. And just a little from my it increases perspective, your attack speed and damage from my perspective i was like i'm reading all this and i'm like damage boosting five motherfucking people on your team is going to be insane the gun buff will be like nice if all of your people happen to die for some reason but then you can resurrect them every 10 seconds anyway while you're in valkyrie mode and my so, perspective who was who really cares my perspective was, this gun buff is ridiculous, and she already has one of the best guns in the game, and she is going to murder everyone. And I was like, no, that's stupid. It would be what much better to boost people's damage by 75% all five of your team. That's dumb. Well, Why would you like pull out your you, gun and not heal people? I'd also and like then, to remind you that Orissa's ult is the exact same thing. And then maybe a day, like 32 hours later, the entire Overwatch community exploded with, as soon as you activate your ult on Mercy, you can get a six-man kill, and her ult is so fucking dumb, and you just pull out your pistol and kill everybody. And I just like... Like, like, took my entire sock drawer and had to eat the entire thing because I was like, no, it's not gonna happen where her gun is the best thing to do. Damage boosting five people is much better, but it is not. Fucking taking out your gun is just insane. Like, you become an absolute atrocity of nature because it's not just because of the damage boost on Mercy. It's because of the fact that you can move anywhere on the map in three dimensions for 20 seconds. And that makes you and have better faster attack headshots. speeds. Yeah. And your your yeah, your your gun has faster attack speed and more damage. I was like, there's no way like they had to buff her gun because otherwise it would be worthless to pull out entirely. But no, her gun is fucking insane. And if they don't nerf it, basically people are going to use Valkyrie mode to become an offensive character. Yeah, that, so that, that's what makes me a little bit sad about this, is uh, I kind of wanted to pull out my gun and just kill everyone as Mercy, but it's not going to happen. They're, they, they have to end up nerfing this because I oh, just yeah, they've, they've see... already Oh yeah, they've already... However, it yet, straight up. completely discounting her ultimate... Having a resurrect on one person every 30 seconds sounds, to me personally, a lot better than having an ultimate that you have to hide around a corner and save until your team gets wiped. Yeah, I, I, don't know. I, I like I, the I, fact I, of that you can just resurrect. Like, Reinhardt dies. I have mixed Matt feelings. Use your ult. I have mixed feelings about... Well, not ult, but resurrect. I have mixed yeah. feelings about that because... On one hand... Uh, having her be such a huge tilt 
in a game was kind of annoying sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah, but at the yeah. same time, like, especially at the end of the game where you manage to kill everyone on the enemy team and then Mercy just... And that's just negated, yeah. Negates and all Mercy just re resurrects. And then you, yeah. because you spent all of your skills doing it, it's just over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of get from that perspective wanting to take away that big of a tilt. At the same yeah. time, like, I just don't... If they do this to her, it is going to make her a lot less played. Easily. Yeah. Um, and they're gonna have to... I, I don't know how this Valkyrie mode thing is gonna go with her, her new ultimate, but they're gonna have to give her something else because um, this is going to make her a lot less played than Anna and Lucio. So... Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel oh, like the, um, she's the really that... good now if you're pocketing. Because just don't die for another 30 seconds and I'll be able to bring you back immediately. Exactly. I feel like... I don't know. At, at medium to high level, though, like... I feel like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. At medium to high level yeah. true. But, like, for dicking... In, in the games that we're in... <laughs> well, we're, we're at probably medium level. Hmm. I, I feel like... With this buff, I have not played it at all. I have not installed the Overwatch and PTR. I have not tried the Mercy buff. But I feel like just looking at it, like, it will kind of make her better. Because, think about it. Activate Mal Valkyrie mode. That is 20 seconds of you can play as an offensive hero and just headshot everybody from completely above them. Or... You can heal your entire team, which literally makes them invincible. It's this basically the same thing as in Zenyatta ult if they're sticking together. Or you can damage boost your entire team, which means that all of their shit will deal more damage. And that that's a bigger damage boost than an Orisa ult. Orisa is 25%, Mercy is 75% in Valkyrie mode. Oh, okay. Or you can you can resurrect somebody every 10 seconds. Or even if you don't have your ult, you can resurrect somebody every 30 seconds. So say that Reinhardt is the keystone to your defense. Reinhardt's shield goes down, and he just tries to kill somebody because his shield is down, and then they, they, they just murder him. You rush in and resurrect Reinhardt without using your ultimate. I don't know. The, I, is back up the thing I don't like about it. The, the thing I don't like about it is it it makes you t even more reliant on others. Um, and I think that's Mercy's biggest weakness uh, compared to the other um, the other healers for sure. Like her having to give up your ability to be offensive at all in order to make someone else be able to kill people better just feels bad. I I don't know. Um, like, I I don't know how this is gonna go for the overall balance of the game, but it just feels like it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt her more than I think people realize. Um, I feel like that's the point of mercy, though. Like, if you know for a fact that somebody on your team is really good, like if you know, for example, Cell is really good at Pharah really fucking good at Farah. then you can pick Mercy and you can pocket Thel and then every once in a while you can go and I think heal pocketing I think pocketing is bad. Like Yeah. I think yeah. that that's part of the problem. Like it it And it, and that's what if I you're was saying. Sure. If you're increasing the the I don't know, incentive to pocket one person, it's going to hurt the team more than than yeah. before. And that's uh, what I was saying. Like, it makes uh, the, the, this resurrect makes pocketing like a uh, much more like sort of viable option for Mercy, and I don't like. That. So rather than making her more versatile of a character, they kind of narrowed her focus even more, which I don't like yeah. because she was but already that... relatively dependent on other people well, to be effective, with... and now it's even even more amplified in that, uh, especially if they take away her gun damage and, and fire rate buff. It's going to make it so that she literally can't do anything, but right. but you know help other people. 
But yeah. with Valkyrie mode specifically, let's say for example. Yeah, but that's just during all the five of the people on your team are absolute fucking garbage. Even if you are playing Zenyatta, even if you are playing Lucio, you're not gonna win the game if all five of the people on your team are bad. Well, so sure, if they... but that's not the point. If you compare yeah. her to other healers, if you mm -hmm. compare her to Lucio, Lucio has a better offensive gun that he doesn't have to give up his ability to heal while using. Yeah. He also is able to knock people off of cliffs, which is probably one of the most um, effective uh, and heals in the game. People, yeah. well, you know, independent of whether or not you like it, he that is a very strong ability. If you yes. compare it to Anna, um, even discounting her ult, you know, you can uh, damage amplify someone else, but you don't have to give up your ability to heal or uh, shoot other people or whatever. You you continue to just play Anna as normal. Um, yeah. I mean, if you, you compare it to shooting, Zenyatta, yeah. if you compare it to Zenyatta, he has the ability to uh, damage amplify on a target, um, mm -hmm. which allows him not only himself to be able better able to kill someone, but also allows the entire team to better be able to kill someone. Uh, in addition to being able to heal someone at the same time, like it just compared to the other healers, taking away, like having having mercy be um, unable to f attack people while healing other people, uh, kind of reduces her viability or her versatility like considerably. And if you increase yeah. this, where if they do take away her gun buffs uh during valkyrie mode it's going to make her um ultimate just like kind of a, a steroid like yeah. a steroid for other people but but if you compare it to anna's ultimate like it's it's one and done you put it on someone and they leave if you compare it to arisa's ultimate you put it down and it just affects everyone around you arisa doesn't have to be active in in using her ultimate if you compare it to Mer like if you look at mercy it if the only thing she really gets out of uh, activating her uh, ultimate is being able to heal people stronger or damage buffs people stronger. It, it's like, that's kind of weak. Okay, but think about this. When Mercy is healing somebody and not damage buffing them, they're not per se invincible, but to most characters, they are relatively unkillable. Like, most, like, people who do not do insane burst damage, like a Junkrat that is really good at hitting direct hits, or a Reaper who is right next to you, most people will not kill them when she is already healing them without Valkyrie Mode. Valkyrie Mode not only makes her heal chain to people, but it also increases her healing and damage buff. So, it say you not, activate... It does not increase the healing. Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure I read it did. Mercy's healing and damage beams uh, boosts, uh, and boost beams now affect all allies near the targeted teammate, and the staff's effective range has been extended. Hmm. Okay. Well, I must have been wrong about that, but I still feel like to a good 80% of the characters in the game, Mercy healing somebody means that you cannot kill them until you kill Mercy. Yeah, and so it'd be you're really able good to... for, like, pushes, but then again, so is Lucio's ult. Oh, yeah. yeah, so is Lucio's ult, but Lucio's ult lasts a significantly shorter duration. I don't I don't think it does. Yeah, don't no, it does. does. It's not 20 then... seconds, but at the same yeah, time, sure. at the yeah. same time, it makes yourself much more difficult to kill, too. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah Mercy's well, passive Mercy's makes it so she so heals... Like... Um, when she's taking damage, but she still only has, like, 200 health, so you could nuke her down. Like Yeah, and even if she is flying, like, let me tell you, it's not like they can't fucking chew you. So Mercy yeah. uh, becomes much, or, like, Lucio becomes much harder to kill when he ult uses his ult, and while Mercy can move and stuff, she doesn't really gain any more health, so she's still also... as vulnerable from things like headshots from a Kree. Also, so, like, on the it's... enemy team, you currently have five different arrows pointing directly at where the Mercy is. So, you know, she's she's a pretty big target. So, I just don't... I don't know. I mean, I obviously, I have yet to play it, so I would have to, you know, try it out. But it just feels like... 
like it's not a f- it's not that fun to be nothing but a steroid. Yeah. And and this is kind of a problem I've always had with Mercy. And I've always liked Mercy because she is such an effective healer, but giving up your all of your versatility to do nothing but healing um kind of sucks. Especially when like and they've proven this on in ranked matches, you get less uh contribution towards your skill rating by that pl- just by playing mercy bullshit. so i feel yeah. like assists should count for the exact same amount as kills because characters that are that are good at getting assists are just like they're not good at getting kills so characters that are good at getting kills well it's not just that it's like yeah. damage because it counts damage at, at towards your uh contribution but it doesn't count um, healing someone at full health towards their contribution. So, like, right. you have, in order to get the same contribution, you have to already be kind of losing. <laughs> you have to already be lower health. So, like, yeah. if, if your team is really good at just killing them really fast, and you have a mercy on standby to, you know, res people, Yo, that, like, it, it's yeah. not as effective um, from a just numbers rating system. So, like, right. I mean, they... they I think they have probably taken steps to address this a little bit, but it just feels it feels like she has to work more at being a steroid than everyone else's steroids. Yeah. Um she has to be more active in healing people, more active in damage boosting people. Here here is one point that I want to say. Um the damage boy the the damage boost for 20 full seconds will make people charge their ultimates faster. That is a, like, top-tier strategy with Orisa. You throw down your damage boost when people do not have their ultimates because it causes their ultimates to charge faster because they're doing more damage, which means their ultimates charge faster. So being able to damage boost five people at a time, potentially, and, and that's, like... Orisa's is 25% or something, and Mercy's is 75%. That will be an insane alt charger, and that is 20 seconds worth of ridiculous fucking alt charges. Even if you're only damage boosting one person, you're still, like, really hard to kill. You're still charging their alt way faster. Yeah, but that's that still has the same problem with you're giving up your more versatility... You're giving mm-hmm. up uh, the uh, the ability to affect the battle in an offensive way in order for other people to do things. So it just, like, and that's how Mercy's kind of always been, but I feel like what they're doing is they're taking out her ability to influence the game in a huge tilt the same way. I, I don't know, know. but... I feel like I feel like they're taking away a lot of the thunder that Mercy has. Her ability to yeah. tilt like... games and giving her instead something that increases her uh um her lack of versatility uh compared I... to other healers. I I really don't know though because it... like like let's let's just for a second ignore Valkyrie mode. How fast would you say you can charge your ultimate on Mercy? Would you say that seconds. every 30 seconds? Okay. Would you say that you are using that ultimate on one sing- one person every 30 seconds? No, but... I, I just don't... The impact of one res- <laughs> resurrect every 20 seconds or whatever is not mm. that considerable. Yeah. Um, right. Maybe in the middle of a fight you know, they work hard to take down a tank or something, and then you res them. But I just, that, I do not see that having the same impact as being able to kill four people. Right. Or or giving, I, I... Or giving a, uh, um, an Ana ult to someone who kills, like, four people. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in agreement, but I understand the reasoning bet- behind the change in her ultimate. Let's say I know, I, that I, I, I'm not. I'm not. Sombra... I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing that <laughs> Mercy's ult doesn't tilt and makes the game kind of unfun at the end of the game when 
you know, you completely invalidate yeah. their whole team. I'm not arguing with that. What I'm saying yeah. is what they're giving her does not like like further like reduces her uh her ability to like influence the game in a fun way. Like it it's just I like it's not fun to be nothing but a, a steroid battery. Um and like I understand that probably from a like math standpoint, it probably is good uh to be able to help people charge that uh, all of their shit faster but like i don't know i just i would have rather them given her an offensive ability while she's still healing people somehow <coughs> i just like i don't know that an offensive an offensive ability really fits with mercy i never even thought that having a gun at all fits with mercy mercy is is meant to be a pacifist. She's meant to heal people really hard. She's meant to make other people feel really well, good. Well, I, I mean, from a lore standpoint, yeah, she's supposed to be a pacifist. But at the same time, well, if, if it's a first-person shooter, how how is it fair to take... When every other healer has a, a decent to yeah. good effective um, offensive option, like, Weapon, how yeah. is it fair to completely remove... Uh, well, Mercy's ability be uh, too offensive when they're not even willing to give her a strong enough steroid to make McCree one shot people. Like, well, I mean, for for ten years, Team Fortress Two made it so that the medic was better at using his heal gun and not using his his main weapon. And like but, people who are really good with medic could use his main weapon. Yes, the, the problem with comparing Team Fortress Two to to Overwatch is Overwatch has uh, six people on a team. Mm -hmm. um, it's less necessary in Team Fortress Two to have a balanced team because you have, or, or to have a varied roles because. Yeah. In Team Fortress 2, you can have very specific you have very specific characters who do very specific things, who have very specific counters. In this game, you have to have at least some degree of versatility because there's only going to be six people in each oh, game. Yeah, and and it's kind of switched. Like in TF2, there's a ton of players on each team, but like a very uh constricted amount of things that these players can be. In Overwatch, there is a ton of characters you can be, but a very constricted amount of players. Right. So yeah, like So the, it's it, not a fair comparison to say like, well, in in Team Fortress 2, they made the medic do nothing but heal people when in Overwatch I mean, you're fit you're sacrificing a sixth of your team um in order to be a healer. Yes. Um, so if you're going but, to choose a healer, like why not just be Lucio who can occasionally kill people, kill someone with one yeah. ability, who can uh well, do a, a decent amount of damage um like while also healing someone who has okay. the ability to uh do a huge um like shield that uh can like, like make pushes work right like can, can and, and, and increases together. his own durability like yeah when you well, compare mercy apples to apples to other character it, it characters it feels like she doesn't have the sum of all of their parts if you take away her ability to completely tilt games so yeah. I guess what I'm kind of saying is if they do remove her ability to be offensive with her ultimate like like they're in this they're in this dilemma where they have to either make her really good at killing people and then um you know making this offensive or this uh deep, this support character super offensive for a period of time or they have to make her not as offensive and then just be nothing but a healer without the ability to completely tilt the game. Like, yeah, I don't know I, what they're going to do, but... I just... The thing is, like, maybe it's not fun for a lot of people, but Mercy... <laughs> Zenyatta's healing still only heals one person at a time, right? I accepting his ultimate which basically makes everybody on your team invincible if they stay near him. Right. Lucio can heal everybody at a time, but even when he's pumping it the fuck up, it is not even like a third of Mercy's healing on one person. So if Mercy 
if Mercy pockets somebody, that particular person is invincible. If Mercy does not pocket everybody, somebody, and I, I would not, I would still not say invincible. Least... Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. Like, I don't know, like her person... her ability to heal one person, um, to that speed is not equivalent to uh, Zenyatta's ultimate. In, in terms of yeah. how, how fast it's Certainly healing. not, but Zenyatta can only have his ultimate every once in a while, whereas Mercy can bring her healing to one person all But what the time. you're giving up is your ability to be offensive at all. Right. But if there is even one single good person on your team, one single person on your team who does a lot of damage and is decent at their character... And you could damage boost them, and they're much better than they still, would have been. But that's still putting too much emphasis, on my opinion, in being uh, nothing but like it. It still puts too much emphasis on being pocketing. passive. Yeah, yeah, right. and, and and influencing uh, pocketing. Like yeah, I, and I and I don't like pocketing either. And this is as someone who plays Farah constantly. Like I I, I kind of. I kind of believe that, like, a healer should be more a team healer rather than, you know, I, I think pocketing is, like, bad. Yeah, but versatile. that's the thing. Yeah. Mercy's dash is only on, like, what, a two-second cooldown or a three-second cooldown or something? You can dash to Reaper, heal him up, turn around, dash back to Farah, and continue pocketing. Or you can heal up Reinhardt, damage boost Farah from where you're at standing behind Reinhardt and then turn back to Reinhardt. Oh no, his shield is down, heal him up, wait for his shield to come back up, and then go back to damage boost and Farah. Like like actually she has during a lot Amp It Up during Amp It Up, uh Lucio heals faster than Mercy. No way. That come oh, on. Oh, okay, not quite. Forty six versus sixty. So oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So but, it, it is a little bit less, but it is if it's even two people, counting yeah, yourself it, and someone it, it, else, it is more than twice. It's yeah. more than twice, but let's say that Roadhog is the only person on your team soaking damage for people because everybody's shooting at him. You amp it up, Roadhog, yes, he survives that encounter because you amped it up as Lucio, but the rest of your team then starts getting shot at. You no long you no longer have amp it up. No, but if you're Lucio, you'll, you'll you'll if you're playing Lucio, you intend to be around more than just Roadhog. Okay, yeah, and not only that. Hold on, let's let's, let's analyze the situation. Say everyone's shooting at Roadhog, right? If you amp it up, you save Roadhog. Now everyone's shooting at everyone else. Not yeah, not only what Sans said that that you, Lucio is probably closer to everyone and has amped up other people, <laughs> but also the, the the rest of their team isn't just gonna focus on one other person. They're going to be spread out. Their damage is going to be everywhere else, and also they're going to be less damaged than they were doing the Roadhog. So in that situation, basically you save the entire team and probably killed their whole team by saving the Roadhog and, like, or splitting up their damage. You have Valkyrie for 20 seconds and you heal everybody on the team for 60. Uh, like, the, here, here's the thing about Mercy that's distinct. Like, I know yeah, I said but, TF2 But if you're, yeah, if you're but, Lucio, um, though, you give... You, if you're Lucio, you yeah. give six people 500 health. Well, yeah, and not only that, but the difference between uh, Valkyrie and Lucio's ability is Valkyrie's an ultimate lucio's ability is just it, it's an, an ultimate ability. that lasts for 20 seconds that yeah, is yeah, but lucio's the, is on a five second cooldown the most like uptime of any ability in the game like there's no other ability in the game that has that much uptime compared to downtime even if, well, if i don't know what the, the i don't know what there. the downtime is on that yeah. ability it depends on how good you are of mercy of well it depends how much you're healing other people yeah yeah it, it's not dependent on how good mercy is and that's part of the problem it's dependent on how like bad your teammates are and how much healing you do to them like right so it, it's hard to like directly measure these against each other because uh mercy is so dependent on other people and if they take away her ability to shoot other people during her Valkyrie mode. It will con it will 
even further make her more dependent on her team. Right. Which is not nearly as dependent as anyone, any other healer. And that's, that's my problem with it. Right. I don't know, though. I feel like Lucio, for example, is dependent on the other team basically being stupid enough to walk near cliffs. Lucio but does not deal enough even, damage. Okay, like, even if his you, gun... Even, okay, is, even if you take out his ability to knock people off cliffs or whatever, it, it first of all, changes how they have to play against Lucio because they have to... Yeah change their playstyle to uh, deal with the fact that they can't be near cliffs around Lucio. Yeah. Additionally, Lucio is one of the faster characters who can run on walls and stuff, making him harder to hit, which gives him the ability to stay on points and stuff while your your team is catching up. Like, yeah, and also, as That a healer, is something that no one else can really do the same way. Yeah, and as a healer, like, uh, because of the fact that he's really hard to hit and can run on walls and stuff, he can also heal people in a zone while also being, like, a little piss baby and jumping around and being an asshole and being horribly annoying and he also heals all of the people like you can jump between people on mercy yeah but lucio heals everyone at the same time they're all gaining health at the same time you don't have to wait till someone is healed yeah they heal up quick but you don't have to wait and then move on to someone else it's all the same healing to all the people in the one zone yes which, I mean, but in that it's... couple of seconds can Let's... be incredibly influential like, it can be the changer between whether someone lives or dies. It's in true. That second, whether or not you are healing but, two different people. You could save two people when you would only be able to save one person. A, a good team will focus on a person. A good team will not spread out their damage because even if there is no healer on the team, spreading out your damage is a bad thing to do. Because you might not kill everyone on the team, or anyone on the team. Whereas, if you focus on somebody, Mercy makes them exponentially harder to kill. The more health they have, the harder they will be to kill, because but, Mercy okay, will but be think killing about this. the like, think about this, though. time. You, you, okay, so we either have to look at this at high end, which is mm -hmm. assuming everybody is playing how they're supposed to, or look at it medium to low end where people are not playing it how they should. And they're also, being like selfish what? and stuff. Those yeah, are like no, the two like ways that. you can look at this. If you yeah. look at it at the high end where people shouldn't be taking that much damage, they should be effective with their weapons, then Lucio is still healing six people at the same time. Yeah. Um, well, and not only that, but I don't think like an entire team should focus down like one person, especially like if I'm Farah, um, I'm probably going to work on the Mercy. Uh, right. or the tank. Uh, if someone is not attacking the soldier down there, the soldier is going to fuck me up. Like, I, I don't I don't feel like their entire, or your entire team should, like, focus on one person, because their team is basically going to focus on what, they, you yeah, know, their, each their person counter should and... Be, each person should be focusing yeah. on their counters or, or priority targets, and those priority yeah. targets aren't gonna be the same across... Yeah, and, and also the priority characters. target is going to be the Lucio or the Mercy, which, you know, if one of, one of them's healing the other, then it's a fucking mess, but, you know. Right. That's why so, the two healer meta existed. Yeah, and well, also, uh... Say, and that's... oh no, there's a Reinhardt. He's shielding Lucio. Nobody can get behind him. There are multiple people who can get yeah. behind him. Oh! Yeah, there's straight up multiple people. Farah, Tracer, a, a D.Va could get behind him. Um, someone could just walk past his shield, okay. assuming that their team isn't. But doing could well. Tracer kill a Reinhardt who Mercy is healing? Uh, no. Tracer could kill the Mercy. Tracer could Reinhardt. kill the Mercy. Yeah. But then she might die because the other six people are the other five people on your four people, I guess, not including Reinhardt and Mercy. Yeah. Okay, but that's ridiculous be because Tracer, Tracer right? would never like. Reinhardt would never be a priority target for Tracer. Yeah, so, only, so Tracer well, would the, be going yeah. after someone like like McCree or something. Yeah, so it's like that, maybe if you're that. maybe if you're healing McCree, McCree still has a chance of dying to someone like Tracer even when you're healing healing yeah. them. Well and, and think about this. Let's say that the uh that the uh Tracer does go after the Reinhardt, right? Tracer right. is shooting Reinhardt, the Mercy is healing the Reinhardt. The Reinhardt isn't dying, but he's turned around and started swinging at Tracer, so the rest of the team um, is getting shot at by the rest of the other team because Reinhardt's shield is down and Mercy I mean, can't really heal them because she's not Lucio and can't heal everyone at the same time. 
I mean, a bad Reinhardt is going to turn around and start swinging at Tracer. And they almost but always do, have... I'm telling you. So what would a ba- what would a good Reinhardt do? Just take it? Ignore Make... ignore Mercy dying? Yes. Like... Yeah. No, ignore ignore Tracer dying or ignore Tracer shooting at Mercy or him if there is multiple people in front of him. So because that, that, there are so here's four the problem with that. On the team. Here's yeah. the problem with that. You you keep on saying like this is what a good character should do. This is what a character good character should do. But like the the situations vary wildly. So you have to think yeah. of the average. The average is that Lucio is more consistently healing more more people than Mercy. Period. Yeah. I mean, you you constantly say that Lucio's like a bad healer, but he is not. He is a I, great healer. He is. I so hate Lucio good. as a healer. I, I do not think... I think that his main thing is basically giving health regen to the entire team. You get, like, two health a second. And then he pumps it up, and you get a lot of health once. But if he's not healing more than one person, there's no reason... If he's healing two people, then yes, he's better than Mercy. But if you are... If, oh no! Roadhog's dying! I gotta pump it up! But nobody else is dying? Then you are completely worthless. There's no reason not to place a god on you. Then yeah, he, then I think your I think your dying. perspective on healers is is just yeah, straight. Really, it's really weird. Yeah. And, and yeah, because my right. perspective um, on healers comes from a complete numbers standpoint. Zenyatta deals a lot of damage. That's all. Well, yeah, but that's true. the thing. It's but, it's like from a complete number standpoint. But situationally, like if the Roadhog is dying, then other people. No, actually, I are think I think the opposite tr- is true. I think from a complete number standpoint, Lucio is a better healer. Like he's okay. okay he that's, does that's six. True. He does sixteen point twenty five per second. So if you're hitting even four people, you're doing sixty five total healing. So that is that more is healing the spread out. Game if. Than- and that is only if those people have the health missing for you to heal. And a lot of times I mean, but they that's do, still like again, people spread out their fire. They don't always they don't like ever only focus on one person unless even, it's the healer. But that regen makes it so that any small amount of damage that hits people is immediately negated. So like I, do, any, I feel any... like Lucio is more reliant on his team to be good because Lucio, yes, will always be better if your team wins an engagement and he can heal them up over time. But no, but they, it makes the them it makes them passively harder to kill during the fight too. And it, if you barely, use amp it up, a... if you use amp it up near a, a decent number of people, like four or five, that's still fifty health per person. Yeah, and also the game is very much built and, around the fact that and, you should be, you know, grouped up really close. And you have to remember that all of this healing does not stop him from doing damage, which he does uh with his gun. 20 damage per projectile. So right. that's 20 I mean, 40 sure. that's 80 damage if you hit all four shots. Yeah. I mean in the end for me as a, like like from a personal standpoint, I do not like Lucio because when my team splits up, Lucio becomes completely fucking worthless. He does and not. Most he of does the not. games, he does. He does not. He can he is... pump it up every twelve seconds. Look, just Let's because say... just because you do not like Lucio does not make him bad. He is the best healer in the game. What? But because yeah, he that, is the he most is like versatile the... healer. Yeah, okay. and he's like the Hypo- meta too. Hypothetically, every single on your per- person on your team is outside of your healing ring, and you can only choose one single person to be inside of your healing ring at a time. And that is what happens in most of the games that I play Lucio in. But even if what you're healing you only one person, you are still passively doing that while you're uh, contributing damage towards the team. Like yeah, you're not, not that, giving you're... up anything by being Lucio. Yeah, and not only that, but if you're like on the point, you are also um... not giving up anything by being Zenyatta, and he can heal at a farther range. He heals one person at a time. He heals one person for less. Switch it, switch it, switch it. Switch he he it, heals switch one it. person for less and makes one da- person more less like, than damaged, but he... yeah. but significantly more than the passive healing that Lucio does. But yeah, again, like, uh, I'm pretty sure that not everyone on your team is going to be, like, not grouped up. Maybe you just weren't positioning yourself well. Because, like, if you're close to the points, 
everyone is going to be there. Or if you like wait for people to spawn and like I mean, try to group up with people. Point. Maybe uh, I'm mostly thinking of Lucio on King of the Hill, where nobody fucking sits on the point at all. But uh, I think Lucio's better on King of the Hill because yeah, people really do on stand King on the Hill. point. I don't know. What yeah, and even about. if they're not, they're usually grouped up like on defense. They're usually grouped up. Maybe if they're like kicking ass, then they're up in front, and Lucio can be like. I think this is just about you. You. I just think you don't like Lucio. Like, yeah, honestly. I, I but Lucio the, is the most versatile healer. He is, yeah, he I is have, really good. And do I lots of things. Reasons for not liking Lucio. And it's because of the same reasons that you guys say, are saying that Mercy is bad. You have to rely on your team to be good. With I'm, Mercy, not saying, I'm not saying Mercy is bad. I'm saying she is less versatile and less fun to play because of it. But with Mercy, you're saying you have to rely on somebody on your team to be good. With Mercy, you have to rely on at least a person on your team to be good. With Lucio, you have to rely on everybody on your team to stay grouped up. Well, and not they only won't. that, but the, they will uh, not ever. I uh, no, I, no, not no. true. First of all, that's 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 completely wrong. I mean, um, if I have a been payload map. So many, like might. legitimately, I've never been in a game where we didn't like group up once, it, unless it's like you know a quick play game and everyone's playing flankers. And the thing is, like with flankers, they all have movement abilities that let them get right back to Lucio if he's like healing on a point. Like you got Tracer who can zip pack, you got Genji who can jump back. Hell, even the tanks like that are really mobile, like Winston and Diva, can always just come back to the Lucio if he's like on the point on the payload or on somewhere where people are supposed to be grouped up um most like, of what they have that ability flankers specifically i can sit there and heal the tank for years the tank will be doing their job reaper will be 30 miles away from me and then bitch at me for not healing him as lucio uh, they, like no one would bitch about yeah if if a uh, reaper is that far from their team there's no way the Reaper would bitch about Lucio not healing. Him. Yeah, that is and, and not, not something that, that would but um, like not every attack here was a flanker. Like you got like Soldier seventy six and McCree and all of these people who were supposed to be grouped up with the tank that Lucio can heal. And even if he's just healing those guys, he's doing a significant amount of like keeping everyone alive. Like like Mercy... the tra like when playing Tracer, yeah, I don't get healed by Lucio a lot unless I come back specifically to get healing from him. But, you know, um, I don't expect to. I also don't expect but, a Mercy to heal me on Tracer. I don't really expect a Zenyatta to put his healing orb on me all that much as Tracer. I expect to be, like, in charge of my own health as Tracer. Well, with Zenyatta, I don't know why you don't expect a health orb, because it has infinite range, and as long as he can see you, or even if he can't see you for three seconds... Well, if he can't see me for, like, it. that long, but as long as I'm if going you to go, out, If you go back to Lucio and he just so happens not to have Pump It Up up, you get, like, you have to stand there for, like, a good at least 10 to 15 seconds to get your health back. And yeah, but at that point, I'm not a priority target because I'm probably going to be behind McCree soldier. You would be better tank. served just dying and rushing back to the front because it only takes you, like, five seconds to respawn. Rather than to heal yourself all yeah, the way up, yeah, but I have to respond and then walk all the seconds. way back. And also, I might not be all the way down. I mean, that that's like assuming that I'm all the way down. Usually, I'm like when I'm going back to Elusio, I'm like half down, so it yeah. really doesn't take that long. Yeah, but it's very, really insignificantly small healing. I just no, only in only from tanks. Tanks are yeah. the only one where Lucio yeah, is insignificant. Up. Like, like everyone's everyone else's health, are... other than like. Reinhardt and Winston and uh, Diva, like yeah. those are the only ones that have enough health where it's insignificant. Well, yeah, and not only that, but, but like even on Tracer, like the amount that the cart heals me is like pretty significant, just because she has such a low health pool. Um, on Pharah, I can also get into like a Lucio healing and just be healed up for a lot, and then jump back up into the skies after I was, you know, hiding behind a wall inside of Lucio's circle. And then just be totally fine to go down to go back and kill people. You know, it it works really well. And it's like, yes, Mercy is better at single target healing. That is true. Yeah. Um. But like, you still have to give up your ability to in, uh contribute any damage to a team fight. So. Yeah. Anyway, but we've you, been on this for too long. Yeah. We've been we've been we've on this been for over. Yeah. We're half an hour over than what we plan to do. So, yeah. uh, anyway, 
that was a weird argument about Overwatch, I guess. Yeah. Um, that's it for this week. We'll catch you guys later, I guess. Ugh. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Do that thing that yeah. Saint just said. And good luck to you all. I hope you have a wonderful time on your endeavors. Good night.